What's going on, guys? It's Thursday, and we're here at the J Squared Podcast. And this episode is brought to you by our lovely endorsers, Aunt Cambio. If you need your hair cut, if you need uh, you know anything, actually special kind of cut that you like, specific to you, go talk to Aunt. He has been a barber for a while, and he knows what he's doing. He's a very nice guy, very trustworthy. Um, your hair is in good hands with Aunt Cambio over at Atomic Salon in Johnson. Um, Division Street Auto, go see my man George Ferreira. Great guy, trustworthy again. Uh, integrity, he'll take care of you. Uh, tell him that the J Squared podcast sent you. He'll give you 10% off the labor. He's at 595 Division Street in Pawtucket at 401-723-7080. Go see George. Oneyville Tire in Providence. Our friend Dory, she's at 86 Plainfield Street in Providence. Her number is 401-421-1800. If you have uh, a problem with your tire, if you need new tires, if you, if you, have, uh, if you want used tires, go see Dory. She'll take care of you. Donkey Dodgers Poker. If you have, you know, empty plans for the night, if you want to try something new, uh, something social, it's such a good time. Uh, I've played for Donkey Dodgers Poker for quite a while. I always have a good time. Uh, you know, you know who, what really makes it is the people. I'm a poker player, but the people actually make it, make it, you know, the night. It's something to do. It's it's fairly inexpensive. Um, there's food and drink involved and, and laugh. So go see them um, for $20, $25, $30, whatever the buy-in is at that night. That could enter you into a $2,000 tournament at, at the end of the month and also a possibly a $10,000 buy-in to the World Series of Poker. So go see Mike Otten. Go see Paul. Uh, they're at a pub near you in Rhode Island. Any given night, you can find them on Facebook. Tops Electrical Supply Showroom and Gallery. My friend Sean down in Providence, he's a great guy. He's a funny guy, young guy. Uh, he's very busy. But if you need anything relating to electrical supply or lighting, sconces, outdoor lighting, indoor lighting, uh, give them a call. Look them up. They're there. They'll take care of you. They do in-house consultations. Uh, let's not forget JW and Son Construction. They specialize in kitchens, bath interiors, finished flooring, siding, uh, decks and roofs. Um, again, another personal friend of mine, uh, Mr. John Webb. He's a great guy, funny guy, uh, honest. Go check him out. If you need anything done to your home, to maybe you're investing, maybe you start flipping homes, give him a call, JW and Sun Construction. Last but not least, we have our home for now, right now, Legends Pub, Legends Pub and Grub. You definitely have to come here and try one of their cold sangrias. Uh, I think they got what blue raz out now, raz, watermelon. I mean, what's better than a cold sangria during the summertime? Think about that. No, no, really, stop and think about that. Come to Legends Pub and Grub. They'll take care of you. Ask for my friend Erica or Ricky. Either one. They're very good people. And hey, here's to a new episode. Before we wrap up the ads, and uh, here's Josh we have again. The GOAT himself today joining us, Mr. Jay Gotra, CEO of Alliance Security. And I don't want to sell him short because there's so much more. So, uh, listen, we hope you enjoy. And we had a lot of fun, guys. Hear it out. Time to talk some shit with the J Squared Pod. Here we go. There was actually a, a helicopter that went down and it went uh, top down into water. Hey, hey. Hey, no, no, I'm serious. No, you don't want to hear right? this right now, dude. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, are you talking about fucking. Uh, no, he's talking about because I'm, I'm taking <laughs> flying lessons. That's what he's saying. Like, <laughs> oh, are you? I, I'm learning how to fly. Oh, uh, yeah. Change well, like, yes, don't so worry. It was, it was an Indian guy that owned a security I, company. Look, look, let me do this real quick. It's funny because that's the post, the last post I just had. It's about right. fear, right? Yeah. If yeah. I let fear get the best of me, it stops me from learning, right? The other side of fear is accomplishment. Exactly. That's it. Um, Damn, so anyway, I'm already motivated. I knew this was going to be motivation. Story real fast. So right, this, the, it's upside down. The, there's somebody trapped in it. This big fat motherfucker sees this. His adrenaline starts pumping. He's lifting up the fucking helicopter. 
And this guy escapes. Lot. It's on video. There's, anyway, there's another shit. one with a mom with a child as well, something similar to that. Yeah, you know, I'm sure there's you more. You get than superpowers, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, kind it's of, fucked up. I know there's some, some factors around the fact that, that we only use like 3% of our brains and like, yeah. you know, things like that. So it's mm. crazy. How much you know, of your muscle are you using yeah. too? Well, more importantly, how much like you can accomplish more, but you don't have faith in yourself in essence. Oh, you're, you know what, you're you know so what right. I was just That's thinking of, uh, of the military. Think of what the military does to you. Like they make you do things that you never thought oh, you could do. Oh my God, yeah. Like they'll just keep pushing you. It's like your body will can handle it and everything. Like you, the only thing that's stopping you is your mind. Like you think you're gonna die, but it's you, so true. I just fucking keep running. Because I, I, well, I mean, death is inevitable. I mean, you are gonna die. We're all gonna yeah. die. Yeah. So, but no, I'm saying at that moment when you yeah. think you can't do any more, they're like, do oh, yeah. more, and you're like, you okay. think you're hurting. I Fuck. can't. <laughs> I always it, equated. It's it also to, power of a team. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. true too. When you know somebody's struggling with you, mm -hmm. you know, like you, you, there's some well, camaraderie there. With you? Yes, or well, well, you still yeah. struggle. You got to yeah. struggle before you succeed, or else. Yeah, it's the adversity. What, yeah, what if it, exactly? And then you know you have people that are going through the same shit. And sometimes even if you do feel like quitting, it's like, you know, you have account. You have to own it because he's not quitting and he just did it. Or she, exactly. you know, even worse. Like now, not worse because women are strong too. But if there's a 40 year old woman doing yeah, it, and I'm a 19 year old man, a 19 year old man, I should be able to physically do more. We don't. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah we're just three, two, one. Oh, oh, yeah. We're live. We're recording. We are, no, we're not yeah, live, but we're not live. <laughs> yeah. we're hot. I, I was telling him, man. You know, he was telling me, uh, explaining why live is might be the way to go. Yeah. And I was just telling him how you know I was still well, a little nervous saying, about you know, that. Look, the end like of the Facebook day, live? it's about. I'm saying it's about creating trends, right? Yeah. So one of the big things is, you know, I asked him, you know, um, you know, anything you start in life, you got to know what the goals are, right? So you know, because if you don't know what you're trying to do, it becomes and it becomes whatever it doesn't need to be, right? right. So like case in point, you know, one of the things he said is. We're trying to keep it fun and make sure that we do this as, as not a full-time job, right? <laughs> like it becomes another job. It needs yeah. to be something that's a lot of fun, right? So to me, it's like that's such an important goal to have. So you don't get caught up in like, okay, I can make a little more money, but it's no longer right. fun. Now you freaking got another job. You weren't looking for a second job, that's right? exactly right. So it's important to like have that balance to learn what you're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it gives you the outcome you want. You know what I'm saying? I 150% agree with that. <laughs> it's funny because we were Thank just you. we were kind of just discussing that before you got here, you know. Like, just to keep it real, you know, most of our people are our friends anyway, so they they probably see it. But we feel like they, like we're hitting a little bit of a plateau, and then what happens? I feel like you start. I feel like then you 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 have like this this microscopic view of every little thing, you know. Instead of being pragmatic about it and looking and saying, "All right, it's probably a couple simple tweaks." I think we start to overanalyze it, you know, and we, mm -hmm. this feeling of like a plateau makes us, I don't know, dude, just like questioning like, all right, what do we have to do? What do we have to change? What so, do we have to fix? Yes, I agree, right? Yeah. So plateau is a pretty cool thing, okay? People forget what plateau is, okay? People look at plateau as a negative thing as opposed to a positive thing, mm. okay? Each plateau takes you to another level up, right? So you got to plateau for a level, build, and then level up, right? So it's it's part of the process. You know, people always think that it should always yes. just be like this. It's not. Yeah. No. You know, look, I'd rather plateau than fail. Failure is right? part of the process. Wait, that's part of the process too, right? So at the end of the day, don't. it's all about its number one value. What's that? You've been PMA, there, right? baby. Positive mental PMA. attitude, right? That's still the same. I give you all four of them if you exactly. want them. Exactly. Hey, I right? I'll them. give you the new five. You know, but oh, there's a fifth one. Oh, I'm and there, old, there, there's a wait, wait, wait you change on it. You, you can't, you can't talk like this. You got to fill the viewers. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Let them know so, what you're talking about. So, I'll let you give it away. You know, Josh, if you want to start with, uh, you know, how we met or how do you know me, so that'll give you back to that. I think I may have actually talked about this on the podcast. Oh, this is the one that you paid for in Vegas. No, no, it was actually me and my buddy. At this time, I was 18. You know, my girl was pregnant. She was working two jobs. I was working two jobs. I'm like, man, I got to make more money. Go on Craigslist. I see this ad. It said, make $200 a day. Work is like play. And I'm like, I'm 19 years old. I'm like, well, fuck yeah, man. Uh, that sounds great. Probably going to play video games or something. Clock in, clock out. I show up to this interview wearing like a, you know, a $20 Burlington box shirt and tie. Like just a really newbie to the professional world. You know what I mean? I had no idea what I was doing. First time I ever wore a tie for an interview in my life. And it was a dual interview. It was me and my buddy. We go, we interview. Like stepbrothers? <laughs> Dude, yeah. exactly. Like stepbrothers. And like, again, hello. you got to remember, like, I'm, I'm like 18 or 19, so I, I didn't what know what a lot of money man? was. You know, like, exactly. if it was $7.50 an hour, I'm in there. Whatever. $200 yeah. a week, I'm, I'm there. So 
I sit down, and now as soon as I walk in the parking lot, I'm like, damn, like this is a, a smaller building on the outside, but there's a Porsche out there, there's a Benz out there, there's like what the yeah. fuck are these guys doing? Like I'm in. I sit down. I I'm across from Jay and his two business partners, I believe at the time were Matt Tucci and Barry. Oh, Barry and Brian, actually. That was it was Barry still, and Brian? Yeah, this was on Picasso Ave. Oh, Picasso. I mean, it was still Barry and Brian, but okay. Matt was part of the picture as okay, well. Okay, gotcha. You know? so, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so... We, it was I, us I hope they don't mind using their yeah. names, but... So they kind of give me... And it's, a, you know, it's a... For lack of better terms, it's like a telemarketing um, opportunity. And they... Yeah. They're both sitting sales. there. They ask me, yeah, sales. Yeah. Uh, so they ask me, like, what have you done? I'm like, I've worked in the kitchen before. I don't really know shit about anything. Then he just says, all right, man, here's what you're going to be doing. And if you can read this script... He goes, if you're going to have this memorized, the first paragraph memorized in five minutes, I'll give you $100 right now. I was like, bro, like my biggest check at that point in my life was like $230. <laughs> so I'm like, what, dude? So I studied the shit out of it. I said it. I didn't mess up. He gave me 100 bucks on the spot. And uh, I ended up working for that company for a long time, learned a lot of things. And Jay is the CEO of that company. So he, I was lucky wow. enough to get in when you were still like, How, you know, hiring yeah. people. Now it's fucking. How long ago was this? That was 2000 and. 18? Eight. Oh, 2008. Eight, yeah, bro. Yeah, not damn. 18. 2008. Yeah, it's, so it's how, been a while, how long man. did you uh, own the business for before he started? Uh, 2003 is where I started it. Oh, wow. Where'd you start so it? It was me. It, start, it was started in the spare bedroom of my apartment. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, but, yeah. It's like yeah. Jeff Bezos type. Like, yeah, man. So <laughs> it's like, you know, um, he's smarter than me in the sense that he understood finance to take advantage of all that. Yeah. You know, I was more of a small business owner starting from a spare bedroom in my apartment, you know, without a college <laughs> degree. I dropped out of college to start my business, you know. So, Let me ask you, why security and all that stuff? Um, it was my part-time job while I was going to school to be an engineer, you know. Ah. Um, but it was amazing. Mechanical engineer? No. Uh, uh, mechanical engineer. So okay. that, was my, that was the reason I was going to be uh, in that field. Uh, but, you know, it's amazing. Life has a way of putting you in the path that's best suited, you know. Yeah. So as long as you're willing to accept the opportunities that come your way, right. you know, it creates opportunity, mm. right? So, you know, um, it, it, the, the, when I went to this interview, you know, the person that, that got me there, Herc Mello was his name. You know, oh, it, you know he basically, love, Herc, love Mello, Herc, man. Herc Mello. Herc Mello. So he basically, he, he basically, it's funny, he actually liked me. I used to live in New Bedford. <laughs> yeah. And the office was in Coventry, Rhode Island. Oh, shit. So I didn't know where Rhode drive. Island was at the time because I had just moved to New Bedford because I started going to UMass Dartmouth. Yeah. You know, so while I was there, um, you know, you know, I, 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 it's funny, I answered the same ad. My ad said $100 <laughs> a day, work is like play. You know, so I picked up the phone and called to that ad. And, you know, I didn't know where Coventry was. So the guy said, listen, just, you know, it's 15 minutes. It's, he said it's like 20 minutes from, from um, um, New, New Bedford. Bedford. 20 you know, minutes. So, I mean, obviously, you know, and I, it was an hour and 10 minutes each way. The Sorry. reason I know is because I got like the job. And this is before, like, GPS and shit. You're like, oh, you know, yeah. you're probably just like, yeah. all right, so, say I'm 195 so, for 40 miles? What? How? Yeah, the Atlas out. <laughs> exactly. It's literally, I'm not kidding. It was oh, like, that's you know, troop. I had to call him for address. That's a troop. Yeah. You know, like, so, you know, I'm I literally, I'm, I'm 25 minutes in. I'm like, hey, wh which exit you said? And he's like, oh, no, no, no. It's 20 minutes after you reach Rhode Island. So then he like changed that. Yeah, to that yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, whatever. I'm no, here anyway. Providence. <laughs> yes, exactly, right. Off so the highway. The other day I was so far in. I'm like, I can't turn back now, you know. And at the time it was the same similar phone sales job, you know. Yeah. Uh, but the benefit was that they were giving. So wait, me what company salary. is this that you're? Uh, so this was back in the day, Patriot Security. They okay. don't exist anymore. Right. But that was well, the they do that's now. how they're, I got into the trash security. removal company though. They I'm sorry? The, the trash removal company now, Patriot. Exactly, they right? Evolved. So that's not what it was before. It's Patriot Disposal, but similar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, basically, I made it there. The difference at the time was at the time they were given a $500 a week salary. And, I mean, this is 2003, and that was a lot of money. Yeah. And the hours worked well for me because they, they would work 5 to 9 at night, 6 days a week. So it was a great, you know, position, you know, for me to have as a college student. So that's how I got into yeah. the business, you know. Um, and it was, it was, you know, so that's kind of how I got into security. And what sold me on security was, you know, how security was explained to me, right? So they explained to me that, look, you'll be a superhero. You know, you'll get mm. a chance to protect homes and families. You know, you know, you may not, you know, you may not be loved. You know, you will be misunderstood. But at the end of the day, you're protecting homes and families, right? Um, and, wow. and and it's and it kind of stuck with me, you know. 
Um, so that's why I got into security. I love what I do. You know, like, like I say all the time, I protect people, you know, um, and that's not something you could say about a lot of things you do, you know. So it's easy to build yeah. culture around that. You know, it's easy to, you know, care about people and protect people and when you value say, people, you know. So, right. Because it yeah. happens naturally almost. It's exactly. Yeah. Well, not, it's almost it does. Yeah. Yes. It's a natural process. When you say build culture, are you talking about your culture at the company? I mean, yes, you know, culture, culture, I don't believe is just a company thing. Culture is a company thing in the sense it's, it's your customers that also help you create your culture, you know? Mm. So it's, it's, it's going after the right people that care about the same things you care about, right? So, you know, I think there's this common misconception that people think everybody's our customer, right? Mm. But it's not the case. Your customers should be people that care about the things you care about, you know? So you get true people that will have loyalty over time, right? So sometimes people get so caught up on like, you know, you know, I want to be everything, you know, yeah. it's not the case, you know, think about Chanel, right? Let's use some examples. Chanel, they sell bags for $5,000 and they raise it $300 every freaking, you know, every freaking year without caring about, hey, if we lower that to 1500 bucks, I could sell a lot more bags because to them, they have a clear audience. They're like, it's, it's, it's luxury audience, too. right? Yeah. So they're not trying to appease to everybody, but they stand for what they stand for. And the people that believe what they stand for, they Buy follow them, right? Yeah. And Chanel isn't there to you know to appease the masses they're yeah, there they don't even care about to, everybody else they exactly. just want their they care their about market. what they care about yeah. which is this is our vision yeah. our mission our culture our yeah. values and if you care for what we care for come join it's us it's kind of like us like you know we do our podcast we don't we we have our <laughs> yeah i mean there's there's our market you know what i mean hey exactly. fuck everything you know, else we don't, well yeah. we we mentioned too like we we think we have a market we try to have a market but we're kind of like our market is anybody who's willing to listen so that could well, maybe not be we're the, in the beginning stages. So true, but uh, I think the way that we kind of fit into that is there's a lot of things that we might say or talk about that can be, you know, not appealing to everybody. Mm -hmm. But we realize like, dude, there's fucking six billion people in the world. We don't, we can't appeal to everybody, and we don't want to appeal to everybody. Mm -hmm. The people that you know can appreciate our, our our banter or our humor or the way that we you know express our opinions. If they enjoy it, then they enjoy it. Everybody else can just listen to another podcast. Dick. No biggie. Yep. So I'm hoping. Was, I'm hoping. All right. So we're going to be the next Chanel. Is basically what so, that means. So my perspective is this: <laughs> Chanel, right? we're going to start making bags. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true though. It's funny because you know, like it's 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 tough when you're starting out, right? Because when you're starting out, you know, people think like you know, starting a business is a good thing. It is if you're focused on what you're trying to be, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, that's the same thing I'd say to you, Josh. I mean, you know. You know, you know, goal setting is the number one thing, right? right? So if I was you, I'd set that goal instead of saying, you know, look, it's about sending the message to the world, right? You know, if you, if it's, it's law of attraction, right? So right, if you right. sit down and, and, and talk about what your true audience is, you know, your audience will introduce you to those audience, right? But if you sit about it and talk about, look, there's six billion people and we don't know who's our audience, then your audience doesn't know who to attract the people you mm. want to listen to, right? So if you're more specific to say, hey guys, we want cool people that enjoy just daily lifestyle and the way they want to go to market, you know, like and learn about new things because we bring people from different facets of life and, 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 you know, have fun with us and grab a drink with us, right? Yeah, then dude, that's... we're here, right? But that's the thing. If you share that message with the world of exactly what you want, you know, if I was listening to your podcast, I'd be like, I'm going to send it to my buddy that likes this thing. It's right. crowdsourcing. It's about right. reaching to the mm -hmm. smarter people that believe in you, okay, and telling them what you believe in so they can give you the other 200 And they can reciprocate can to, let's right. say, and expand yes. to other people that feel the same way or care about those same things that we care about and talk about and bullshit about and whatever blah blah, blah. exactly so, so it's like you know? we, we, we've been kind of going back and forth the three of us because even though he's behind the scenes and there's you know dark office over there Who's Georgie George name? right here my yeah, man George George's the man he's no, our no, George is here he's our um, <laughs> you know technical AV engineer slash CTO slash editor slash volume everything everything behind the Good. scenes he does but we've we um, collectively we've always you know we've kind of kicked around the idea like oh should we have a need should we not have a need like you said earlier, you should definitely have a niche, and I think that we just didn't know how to um, define it. What's the word I'm looking for? Like when there's a word and you had articulate, like we couldn't, yeah, define articulate it, it, articulate yeah. it to each other. Like, hey, we do have a niche. This is what it is. We just need to, 
you know, it's like, people like us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm saying, you know, three guys at a bar. Right? Yeah, you know, right. like, that should be your podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like, you George, know, <laughs> can you change the name on all of our fucking avenues right now? Go three forward. guys at a bar. I'm a marketer. You know what I'm saying? So if you sit with me for three hours, I'm telling you how to build a plan, and I'm an entrepreneur, right? What so do we have two and a half hours left. Entrepreneur, to me, I want to innovate everything. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. hey, I'm more than happy to help and hey, add value. You know what I'm saying? To Absolutely. me, that's yeah, the thing. Add value. It's it's a weird thing. I, I told him, you know, and. I'm just being 100% right now. I told him, I'm like, oh, yeah, my buddy called me before um, before I got here, you know, before earlier today. And I'm like, man, I have this, anytime I have a conversation with you, I have this weird, it's like an intimidation factor, but it's not, that's probably not the greatest word to use because I feel like usually with intimidation, there's a threat and it's non-threatening. You know, it's almost like being for the, you know, I don't want to sound like a little, you know, weirdo about it, but it's like trying to, to make somebody proud of like the, how you're handling something like that's when you ask me fuck. like when you ask me like goals were, <laughs> that's gay as fuck he's like a little bitch no like when you asked me what the goals were I was almost disappointed that I didn't have that outlined because you taught me that they're important and I see your success so when it's like hey you know what to do you're just not doing you're it you're just like, not doing it right? you know what I'm saying I was almost like fuck I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell you right now that we don't have them as defined as we should and that's probably why we're plateauing Exactly. But guess what? That's part of life, okay? Not all of us have all the answers, okay? But the, the funny part is this, okay? That's why you we have you. Exactly. <laughs> Look, you know, my point He's is... He's like, okay, hey, yeah, let's just call I'm, it the J1 podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> Turn everything over to him. Yeah. Hey, I'll join the podcast. I'll help. I like to add value. That's you know? lit, man. So, I mean, look, you know, at the end of the day, Josh, you know, we don't, have, we don't all have all the answers, Okay. And we are all people, so we don't are we're not always disciplined to drive an outcome, right? So it's not about looking at that or like you know saying things like you know like oh man I felt bad I didn't have it. Saying good, so the next time when Jay asks me that question, I'm gonna fucking have it, right? Okay. Winners figure out a solution, losers bitch about the problem, right? So my uh, perspective is good. You're a winner, Josh, right? So good. You reached out to me, right? That's the level. Maybe this was God's way, right, of getting you to that next level from your plateau by saying you know what. He's going to make it. We're going to do this, and we're going to give you another opportunity. It's how you take advantage of that opportunity is what gets you to the next level, right? I'm going to leave here today, and I'm going to go back to my life, right? And I'm going to do all my fucking things that I do and keep going because I'm going to set my goals and be who I'm right, about, right. right? But if you don't set your goals past this meeting, now learning that this should be your next step, then you're the asshole, right? Like, so, you know. Well, not I just me. You know, you're an asshole, exactly, too. But both of us. But right. listen. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, for <laughs> the assholes. I'm like, listen, but, I feel like such a prick now. <laughs> I got a millionaire calling me an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, if you don't take advantage of the opportunities that God brings you, right, then don't talk about the fact that you're not getting that opportunity. He's yeah. always bringing yeah. you something true. new, right? Very it's true. you to either accept it or, or take it away, right? Even if he lets you're you... You're motivating me, man. Well, but it's, it's the truth, right? I told Look, him positive I'm about attitude. to get down and do some push-ups. <laughs> Let's do them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, hold on. Let's do them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to... No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to supervise, uh, just so we know. Not, I'm going to supervise. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to roll on my stomach. I, <laughs> It's, it's funny. Ahead, I'm though. sorry. Go ahead. You were, you were saying. It's okay. No, no. I'm saying, you know, I was just merely making a statement. That, How old are you, man? You, I'm 37. 37? Damn. And you've been you've 30. owned this company since 2003. Yeah. I've You're very successful. I've been able to generate over a half a billion dollars in revenue. That's in, it? Since, since, huh? <laughs> That's it. You ever sniff yeah. a line <laughs> off a cheerleader's ass? Huh? Bro, that's what? so inappropriate, dude. Why is that inappropriate? <laughs> I'm asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me on that. Uh, <laughs> have you ever sniffed a line off a cheerleader's ass? I have not. Okay, Unfortunately, that's, that's not something I've He's had like, the pleasure hey, of enjoying. Define cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I've never snorted a line, so I lost it there. Oh, there you go. Okay, all right. It's such a random thing to ask, dude. Hey, well, stop. We're going through like his successes. <laughs> He's just thinking, what, like, what would I do if I generated half a billion? I was like, if I was in his spot. <laughs> <laughs> if I, it's like, yeah, no, if I owned a, com a successful company for that long. I've done a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm I mean, sure I'm, you I'm have. also happily married as a father now. <laughs> You're trying to bring up the fucking dude. Yeah. Cool, father man. of two, two beautiful nice. girls, you know. So um, I have a three-year-old and a ten-month-old. Give us a rundown, like the, the the routine. What's your routine day for you? Like being a young entrepreneur, successful, have a family now. You know, what, what's your average day like? Um, so it's a very good question. My day is kind That's of a little bit question. funky. Okay, it's based around my family. So you know, my not life, your I business. No, not my business. Okay. Definitely not my business. My business is my way 
of achieving goals and right. feeling successful. Absolutely. But my family is my number one priority, right? So I have three things that I value in my life that I consistently work towards, right? So it's my personal growth, my professional growth, and my family, right? Those are the three things. Family being number one, right? So yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things I say to my wife, I, I work my schedule based around my wife, okay? So the truth is one, one benefit I have, what I'm blessed to have is I get to make my own schedule, right? So the way I do it is I ask my wife every week, listen, take the two hours or three hours you need for me, Okay, on my calendar, and then I plan everything around it. So, you know, you know, the end of the day, you know, your wife doesn't want a lot of time from you. Right. She wants those moments that she really needs you there. Yeah. And she wants absolutely. to feel supported. So if it's, you know, make it to one of my, you know, kids' graduation or being there because it's her, you know, uncle's wake, you know, if yeah. I'm there for those moments when she needs me and I plan around that, you know, that helps me earn her trust and respect that I'm there to support her, right? So, you know, look, Dude, the other day, so, you know, if we just a, do that. Such a good thing to hear. Like, just, I, mean, I can't even imagine somebody that could, anybody in the world that could hear that and be like, no, that's a bad idea. You know what I mean? That's just one of those things like, yeah, that you that hear. That really like, turned me off. Not, yeah, like, <laughs> there, there's, that's probably the most perfect way to sum up, like, how to, you know, keep, not just a marriage happy, balance. but your, yeah, yeah, balance, fairness, respect between each other. I, there's very few things that I hear in my life where I'm like, all right, somebody could, you can play devil's advocate with shit. You can't hear that and play devil's advocate. <laughs> you can't be like, what if your wife was like, no, fuck it. I don't want you to make time for me. Like, yeah, exactly. there's no way to like negate that. Sorry to interrupt, but. No, 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 just... not a problem. That's actually good. I appreciate that. You know, yeah. so, you know, it's, you know, and it goes back to practice, man. In life, you get good at what you practice, you know. So if you spend time with your family and you practice being a good father, you're a good father, you know. If you, you know, it's it's your habits that define who you are, right? One thing that in my life I always say, it's my, it's my number one thing is, I don't believe people are bad. It, they just have bad habits, okay? But most people, you know, the, the winners of the world, they understand that. And they'll say, look, I have bad You're habits. You're saying winners. Who Define winner. Winner is a person. I know it's kind of like... Uh, I'm going to define it to you. Go ahead. It's, my, my definition of a winner is completely different. All right, cool. A, a winner is a person that drives their own mission and vision. Okay? I like that. Because it's not about... Being the richest guy, if you don't right. give a shit about money, mm. don't fucking focus it's on It's not money. necessarily results oriented. Not at all. To some degree. It, I mean, obviously, you want to. No, listen, it's, it is results oriented, so I apologize, but it's not finance or monetary. Mon it's like monetary, monetary isn't yeah. what you want. Like, you know, look, man, some of the best people I know have been teachers, okay? Yeah. They get paid like shit, okay? But when you talk to a teacher, they're not talking about how much money they want to make, they're talking about how they care mm. about how their students are impacted. Right. <laughs> and how they take pleasure in that. And they're willing to sacrifice money because they know they can make a lot more money doing something else. But right. to them, the legacy of theirs is when a, a student of theirs becomes successful in life, right? Right. So that's what a true you know, that's the value of a teacher is. That's the accomplishment. Their success isn't money. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, if, and, and shit, if money was their success, they're doing the wrong thing because they're never going to make the money they want to make Should being be a teacher. Alarms. They'd be selling alarms, right? For alliance. <laughs> Heck yes. You know what I'm saying? So that's the point. You know, so if they care about just protecting people, hey, you can come to alliance. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's wow. Cool. That's a pretty, uh, uh, I don't know, it's inspirational as fuck, man. That's why I'm, I'm glad that you took the time. I'm glad that you've, you know, I've never, for as successful as you are and for, because again, you know, like you were a CEO of a company. I'm just, if you think of um, the corporate spectrum, how it could look from the outside, I was maybe you know, not entry level, but clo closer to entry level than I was to, um, you know, like executive level. But I've never once either reached out to you or tried to talk to him or went for advice where I felt like I was talking to somebody that didn't have the time for me. You know what I mean? So you do a good job, too, of, um, you know, just making people feel respected, you know, for as high of a level of CEO you are or uh, executive you are. Whether you're talking to somebody like me or somebody like Shivoni who was higher than me, I feel like it was always the same level of respect, and that's gonna help drive the message that you're. I'm high as fuck, bro. I didn't even know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep carrying on. I'm waiting for you to fucking blow him. <laughs> <laughs> not again. Not again. <laughs> wow. You know what it is, Jay? Yeah, I'll that? be honest with you. That's sure. like an alliance thing, right? 
So look, you know, I've had my ego. It's like I've a brotherhood. Had my, it's a, it is. You know, what I'm saying like we we really care right. about what we do. You know, it's funny. I was talking to a couple of my people. I think today. that drives success. I mean, hundred percent. People I think used you to accuse kind of me. Out. You you have the you know dude. They, it's like the it's like the military without the fucking you know military because yeah, exactly. you, you expect a lot out of everybody, but you also praise and reward and there's a brotherhood behind it, but. People used to so accuse important. me, dude. It's kind of like yes. we training animals with goals. <laughs> training him. Mike yeah. on used to fucking when I used to, when I was with you guys, you know, because you know, I was always very like I was really I was bought in. I still am, you know, the Alliance way. I mean, think about it. it positive mental attitude. Nobody's gonna tell you that's a bad thing to have. Commitment. No money um, caps. Ambition. You know, all these good um, characteristics that you instill are they're all positive. You know. Yeah. So can I give but, you the five new principles? I think one, love I want to hear. I want to tell you one thing. For I, oh. I was accused of being in a cult before because of how I used to promote my job, and I, they're like, "Dude, nobody can fucking yeah, love their job." A successful that much. cult. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I'm that's like, happy. I'm like, sure. Yeah, fucking whatever. The Fortune 500. Those people are a cult. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they just have the same beliefs, and they're like obsessed what is a cult? with. Yeah, you know what a cult is? A religion. I don't know. Hold on. So many things. Culture. What's the first four things on culture? C U L T. What is that? Cult, right? Help me out, the hey, point George. George, is, George what's the cult? point oh, if is, you get anything Googled, he's it's culture, right? Yeah. Culture is being part of a cult. It's being part of something you believe in. It just okay? has this a cult has this negative, negative condemnation that yeah. no, fuck that. We all care about people. We protect people. Right, right. And yeah, I fucking enjoy what I do. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I say to my wife. Yeah, I'd like to be part of that cult. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, cult or that's what people love alliance. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm that's not drinking point. wine on yeah. Tuesday to kill myself or anything like that, but... <laughs> He's like, I'm not walking off that cliff, bro. <laughs> but yeah, yeah right? I guess when you look well, at it. Well, guess what? drinking snakes Guess blood. what? If you're part of a good culture, they don't expect you to do exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> saying, good, right? A good cult doesn't but, hey, do that. I came back around. <laughs> exactly. But we'll let you smoke on Tuesdays. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yo, did you see that... Um. Oakland and California just fucking legalized psychedelic mushrooms. I mean, like, it's just, just about crazy. it, dude. You think it's crazy? I think it's great. I mean, I'm saying, when I say crazy, I just don't just mean like in a bad outrageous. way. Oh. It's just cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's like, flip. it's like wow. nuts. Like, it's like, I don't know what that will turn to, but look, man. That's <laughs> We're going to find like, out. <laughs> that's the thing about it's life. like a more like, yeah, I'm motherfuckers crazy, but yeah, do what you do. Saying, like, like, do what you exactly. do. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But look, the end of the day, you know, this is the thing about, you know, debate, right? Like, people like to, you know, create, you know, talk about things. At the end of the day, dude, everything in life has a pro and a con to it. True. There is no true. one thing you could tell me that only has a pro and does not have a con. It's just not the way I of the world, that right? Thing you said earlier about fucking respecting and loving your wife and doing that. There's exactly. no con to that. And, and listen, man, but at the end of the day, it doesn't mean we have a perfect marriage. We fight, hmm. okay? We, we, we do the things that are necessary in every marriage, right? So we don't have some specific and perfect marriage. But what we have is a rule that we say we talk through things, okay, right. and we grow through adversity. So when we fight, we come back, you know, an hour later, someday, a day later, you already someday, know where you're a year be. later, right? Yeah. But we know that until we talk through it, understand each other's perspective, we can't grow. We can't become a team, right? Because mm. a team is compromise. It's not sacrifice. It's compromise, okay? It's learning each other's perspective and saying, you know what? I want to be one with you, so I'm willing to move 50%, and I need you to come 50%, and let's build something that we could say we're becoming one. You know what I'm saying? And look, it's not Damn. easy, and it's timing. You know, the biggest yeah. thing is I say to people all the time, you know, people get caught up. Like, you know, to me, it's like, you know, look, I was ready to compromise when I turned 30 something to wanting to be in a relationship, right? So sometimes, like, you're just not ready, you know? Mm. And that was the reason why the last three fucking ones didn't work out, you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't ready, you know? I, wa- I actually didn't want to settle. Right, so right. I didn't settle because I didn't want to settle, you know what I'm saying? Right. But then you come to a point where you say, look, I want to build want something to, you will. with someone, right? And when the time comes and you're ready, you go from that point and you fucking settle. You know what I'm saying? Right. And settle sure, isn't sure. mean like you're taking less than what you want. It means that you have a different you figure version of out, happiness now. These are the five things I really want from my woman and the rest I'm gonna willing to settle for, right? So that's mm. the thing. But again, it goes back to a goal setting. You want a fucking girl that you care for, put down the five things you will not do without. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. If you don't like put prioritize that down, what you're exactly. Yeah, you know, I carry my list. My wife knows what my perfect woman is. You know what I'm saying? I have it. My Go top five. No way. Let me see. Get the yes. yes. fuck out of here, bro. Oh, yeah. If you have a list of your perfect women right now, I'm gonna come on the bottom of this table. We want to hear the list. <laughs> I will tell you right now. Like Tiggo Biddies. No. Nah. <laughs> 
He's like, name Russ must rhyme with Rama Ryak. <laughs> is that an Indian joke, man? No, Salma Hayek's not Indian. <laughs> so look, this is my perfect woman list. I will show it to the camera so people can see it. All right, read it so can everybody can it? hear it. Yeah, read it. Some people just I'll read it, but I want to show it so people know it. <laughs> Some people just right? listen. Makes me feel wanted through love, affection, and attention. That's my number one. Supports me and helps me succeed through failures. That's my number two. Learns and grows with me. That's my number three. Prioritizes me after our children and is willing to fight for my honor. That's my number four. And my five is believes in my values and principles of success. Those are the, the values like, that I care for. Damn. Because if she doesn't believe in what I believe in, she doesn't stand like for what loser. she stands for. You know, I don't want, I don't want, you know, I know what I want. That's why I know I need my wife, right? Mm. Because look, I'll fight with her. We won't see things the same way. As we grow and our kids get older, her and I will have different opinions. But none of that I give a shit about. That's part of life. We're going to learn and figure right. out a way to communicate. That's all, again, you know what I'm saying? part of the longevity exactly. process. Exactly. It's not in your top five. So. You know what I'm saying? But I ask so. her every time, what's my core values? And I ask her to repeat them. I ask her for my principles of success, and I ask her to repeat them. Because I know that's what I want her to know. This is what drives me, right? So at the end of the day, if she wants to be with me and she's willing to learn and understand me... The rest will figure it the fuck out, but she needs mm, to know who right. I am. You know what I'm saying? And the only way she knows shit, who I am bro. is when I give her a fucking list and tell her what I care for. You're like, I want her to know who I am, and I did not leave the fucking mayonnaise out on the table. I'm going to see how this works out. I'm bringing home a list tonight for my fucking wife, and it's going to be like, things I need from you. Yes. Beer. I feel like... <laughs> beer... No bland chicken, like everything. <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. Oh. No, but that's actually, dude. That's that's crazy because it's. I feel like you 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 have the same principles of success with your probably your personal your personal growth your you business know the company growth, yeah the business growth everything. your 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 marriage your family. So I feel like you just enlightened. Like. No, it, you know what it is is because like, and I feel like they probably all have the fundamental four keys in them. Mm-hmm. You know, like that you. That he meant he taught it's me when I was same, eighteen, yeah. and it's. So what I the think fuck Barry, happened, man, Bray, you fucking you slipped. You're sitting you sitting over here with me. You slip. Well, well, this, well, this, this is the <laughs> this is what I'm You're most. On the wrong I've, side of the table, hey, dude. I've never so had a job you or business. Happened. So you say what happened? Why did you leave? What happened? So let's talk about that. Be honest. What yeah, no, I'll, I'll be Share honest. Share your perspective. Oh shit! So about to get real. Yeah, I'm being honest. I want to. Yeah, no, I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, cause I was the the when I was at Alliance most recently, man. I think it was 2016. I was working directly under Shivoni. You remember, mm-hmm. I was in the, the scheduling department with them. And that was the most I've ever enjoyed being there. Don't get me wrong. I love sales, but um, th- there was just something about this. I think there was a lot more of a camaraderie there in that department. I started with, you know, when uh, DeCesare was there, Terrell, you know, Keith Allard, Andrew DeGiorgio. I know he's back. That's, that's what's up, Andrew. I love him. But Chris, Jake, there was a real, it was a solid team. I enjoyed it. And then I was moving my way up, you know, like I was kind of the right-hand man in that department when Chris wasn't there. Everything was great. I was, you know, I was happy. I felt like I was successful. And then something happened where, you know, the guy I reported to was gone and Matt came back. And it was like... You don't like Matt? I I didn't not like Matt. I I didn't like Matt. I didn't not like Matt. I respected him. He was just... I, I didn't know him that well. You know, I didn't... I've never worked with him, you know, but it was somebody new... And I felt like I was the, you know, like the second in command in, in that department. And somebody came in without my next in command telling me, like, no, not just me, but the whole department. And it was like he was not just overruling what I was saying, but overruling what my boss was saying. And I had such a good leader at the time in Giovanni that I was, I was like, honor, my, I would defend his honor and I'd be loyal to him. So when I have a stranger, you know, now he's telling me like, hey, this is a bad idea what you're doing and what your boss was doing is wrong. And I think there was the, there was a piece of communication that either wasn't delivered or that I missed. And ultimately, like my pride wouldn't let me handle that. And I'm like, hey, man, like my boss isn't here. This guy's coming in, changing everything. I don't know who he is. Nobody told me. And now I feel like I'm not going to get what I work so hard for. And I just couldn't overcome that, you know, like fucking dealing change. with that. Yeah, that change. Change got the best of you. Yeah. Because, so, I mean, if you were to ask me, Jay, you know, I'm being honest with you, I think it was impatience in some place because mm. when change happened, you know, look, Josh, oh, I love quick, you, yeah. okay, because you're a great dude, right? 
it, it, look, it's it's one of it's one of my wife's traits. She wears her feelings on her sleeves, mm. right? So you could see right on her what the feelings is, right? So when that change happened to him, I think what happened with him was that that like you know his feelings got the best of him, 100%. and then you know like his impatience because he was like I was just on a fast track to becoming somebody that all of a sudden went away. But Josh, just because somebody new comes in. That doesn't mean your talent diminishes, right, right? right? If you're a fucking LeBron James of the game, right? You're a little LeBron James of the game. The next coach coming in or the next owner coming in will still respect and value the data, right? So I think what happened with you was you were trying to be like, I'm starting from the beginning again. It wasn't the case. You just didn't give it enough time for someone to evaluate the data to then come back to you and say, nah, you're still a fucking A player, no big deal. You're still on that same fast track because that's right, what right. Elias was about, right? So Elias J, it's all about like, it don't matter where you come from because I come from nothing, you know what I'm right. saying? So to me, I wanted to build a company. Like, you know, I was taught a lot of values, right? So when I was taught a lot of things, like- By who? Say, is it, is it, is it a lot of people, your, you know what I'm saying? Your like, mother and father, you know, your- the, the, my, 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 what? my father passed away when I was eight years old. Sorry you know what I'm to hear that. No, no, not a big deal, it's part of life. It made me, you know, stronger as a person to have. We all have that, that in experience. common, actually. Huh? We all have that in common, actually. Although really? That's Tell me about pretty that. Pretty young. Uh, I mean, my father passed away when I was, was in fifth grade, so I was 10, 11 years I was old. Pretty young. Mine passed well, away yeah, three yeah, years. Yeah, you're right. My three years ago. <laughs> well, we, we have all lost our father. Right, it's an you know experience I mean? we share. Hey, hey probably, that's probably, a You need another one. I can grab you another one. You want another one? We're gonna stop and we're gonna continue. No, no, you just, no, you were you were in the middle of it. You were you were saying, go ahead, take another one. You were saying like, uh, you know, before we so interrupt. I'm saying, you know, look, I approach life with utter positivity. Okay, that's great, like, but know, that's why you're successful. Exactly. I don't believe I do something different than most people do. Okay, I just believe that I'm not a cynic. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when somebody tells me here's the right way to do something, even if they don't do it. I don't look at them as a critic. I just take the message for its worth, you know? So right. what I've been able to build is great people around me because I see the good in people, right? Like-minded. You know, exactly. And it's not even like-minded. I'm, I'm like, you know, it's funny because today they have this thing, what's called a strength finder, right? right. So it talks about, you know, we as people, we have a lot of weaknesses, right? right? LeBron James, if you judge LeBron James and say, you know, he's a great basketball player, that's one thing he does really great, right? right? But if you looked at it from the perspective of, I don't know how he's as a golfer. Right. He won't ever compete like that. He won't be a baseball player. Think about Michael Jordan, right? He was the freaking best basketball player, you know, uh, you know, top five at least, Tried right? to be a baseball player. But baseball player, he sucked. He went <laughs> back to what he did good. So true, just because you're a good athlete right. don't mean you're a good athlete everything. and everything else. You're good at one thing. So the challenge that people face is they're trying to be good at everything. You know what I'm saying? But if you mm. pick the top three of these are the three things I care about and then focus on that, that drives out our happiness because you know you're doing it, right? And the biggest thing about goal setting is it ties directly with happiness, okay? Think about it this way, okay? In the little that I've learned about this podcast, I know you've moved from somebody's kitchen to a friggin', you know, office, you know, an office space in the back of a bar and you're <laughs> still going forward, right? Right. But you don't yeah. see any of that. You know why you don't see any of that? Because you didn't fucking put it down. You didn't make we it didn't real. Write it down, right? You There's didn't no write checklist. it down. So you could say, no hey, look, if you today, if I'm feeling bad, the first thing I do is I pop my calendar out and I look back the last 10 days and I say, what I did in the last fucking 10 days, okay, is better than most people do in fucking a year. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. That's how much impact I've made. And then I stop judging myself, right? And I go back to being me. You know what I'm saying? So that's the problem. The problem is, if you look at your judge, if you're judging you, your judge is your worst enemy. You know, right. to me, regardless right. of what I do, I suck, right? I sit here and you guys tell me, hey, you're giving me something that's helping me become better. But when I go home, I go like, yeah, I'm not good enough to be speaking in front of people. Like, I gotta <laughs> like fucking I like, a podcast. I gotta learn a little guys. more, right? <laughs> right? I've only read 100 books. I need to read 200 more. Like, you know, my judge tells me I'm fucking an asshole. You right. know what I'm saying? Regardless of who you are. So what I have to do is constantly fight my judge but the only way I can fight him is with true data, right? Yeah. So when I look at data and I go, oh, look, I'm plateaued right now, but I'm eight steps ahead than most people are. Right. Most people are still talking about starting a podcast. I got one. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So look, man, yeah, you know, man. one thing my mom yeah, told me, right. yeah. it's the truth. And here's our Thank friend. You, Liz. Hell yeah, what's Liz. your name? Liz. Hi, guys. <laughs> Liz, this is live right now. She's like, you're being broadcast. Don't worry, there's only 15,000 people watching. 
Get you out of here. <laughs> Guys, so no. we're at Legends Pub. Yeah. That is yours. Oh, that's a, oh. Yeah. Oh, you put it. Look at, this is why I thought it was weird. Look at his last glass. Thank you. And look at my last glass. Sorry. No, it's not your fault. I'm just, that's why I assumed it was that way. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. No big deal. Thank you, Liz. What were you Thank about? you, Liz. Thank you, guys. <laughs> um, All right, now I'm getting drunk. Well, we were talking about to-do lists, and I, I'm glad that you brought up, not to-do lists, but like goal setting. Ultimately, uh, what is a to-do list? But it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, about a week ago, I started reading again, and I'm like, you know what? When I, I look back... Reading again? Yeah, well, I look, I look back at... I'm a, there's an explanation to it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, uh, duh, I'm like Mike Tyson up in here. No, Floyd Mayweather. Um, so I, I looked back, and I tried to think, hey, when I was most successful, when I was happiest with, like, just how I felt in general, like, and it didn't have much, you know, it had something to do with money, but not all of it was money. A lot of it was like mental health, physical health, just my overall well-being. One of the things that I definitely did was I spent time reading every day. Like I made it and I, I prioritized it, you know, it was first thing in the morning, 25, 30 minutes. It didn't have, exactly. it didn't That's take great. too much time. So That's I started, so yeah, yeah, so I started doing it about a week ago and I went back to a classic from Dale Carnegie, you know, and I'm like, all right, like it doesn't matter. And it didn't even matter what I was reading. It was just like... Creating a good you're habit, reading. you know, exactly. creating a good, a good habit, habit, like we were Listen, saying. And the biggest thing is, you realize it's the it's a fact. What happens to you in the first hour in your day defines what your day is going to be. Okay, you know, I'm I'm gonna repeat that again because it's a it's a fact. What happens to you in the first hour of your day will define your whole day how your day is going to be, and it's a true fact. If you wake up and you stub your foot. Everything you're going to see from that point on is, now my foot is hurting. Now I don't have my, enough toothpaste. I don't have this. I don't have that. And it, mm. takes, the, it takes you and consumes you. It's right? a law of attraction. So the morning one hour, the way you start, is so important, right? Because that defines your rest of the day, right? right? And that's the thing. Like if you start with a great habit like learning, it gives you a way to go, right? Like my, honestly, my first hour in the that's day what I was just is spent ask, to me, you? right? Like it's spent on me because I say if I can get an hour to myself, the rest I can take care of later. So that's why I can set my top three goals. Now think about it this way. I do 100 things in a day. But when I know here are the three things that makes me have value, it makes me go harder. And more importantly, it makes me feel good as a human being like I'm accomplishing things, right? And I judge it fairly. You know, there's days when I put a top three goal. Like I'll say, I'll go home and put my girl to bed tonight. That's one of my goals. You know, I'm going to have these two meetings that are super important. Or I try to set one goal a day. Here's something new I'm going to learn today. Here's how I'm going to make my business better today. And here's how I'm going to drive something for my family today, right? right? And it's the same thing I would have done. I would have gone home and put my daughter to bed anyways. But when I put that as my goal and I get it, it makes me feel better. I check three boxes every night and I go, you know what? I'm not a complete asshole. I actually did the three you things did. I said yeah. I have to do today. You're following you know, and it's through. the same goddamn three things. Like today, if it's your podcast, you know, honestly, this was one of my three things today. I woke up and I said, I'm going to make it baby. to the podcast today because to me, I want to be heard. I feel like I do have a lot of good things to say and I keep it to Hell myself. Yeah. I think you have a lot of I good let things my to say judge too. You know, and honestly, Jay, I let my judge get the best of me. I always think, like, I'm not good enough, and I need to learn a little more. You're the next Gary because, V. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I like Gary V. I listen yeah. to him all the time. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he's he's he's, he's good at what he does. I yeah. believe in all of his messages. Who's Gary V? I've never heard of him. Is he like Gary a Tony Anderson? Robbins or? My bad. What the fuck what? was that? <laughs> I thought we were about to get hit by a car or something. <laughs> God damn it, Joe. Gary Vaynerchuk? Right? Yeah. That's his last name. Yeah, I've never heard of it. Is it like a Tony Robbins, like just an inspiration of uh, David Goggins or it's more, similar? More geared toward like with a lot more, you know, with a lot more. He's athletes. really raw, you know, <laughs> just kind of like you gotta fucking do this and you know that kind of thing. Yeah, no doubt. It's like oh. The Rock then. Yes. The Rock is inspirational. He's, fuck. he's a young you like, follow entrepreneur. You don't know, follow The Rock, bro. Every day is fucking five in the morning at the gym, and if you could really define, the like, rock, hey, the man. Rest of the rock? The Rock, the actor, the wrestler, the fucking tequila whatever maker, the headphone, whatever you want to call it, the fucking highest paid actor in the world. He's just, dude, he's, but he's like, it, and I guess I kind of wanted to ask you about that, you know, because we would all look at The Rock and be like, damn, he's made it. You know, he doesn't have to do anything. I would look at you and say, wow, you've made it. You know what I mean? Like, you're successful. You have, you're happy with your, not just, you know, financially, but you have a successful business, successful family, you know, nice shirt. What keeps you like? What how do you fuck? not just wake up tomorrow and say, hey, "I made it"? Like I Make stopped sure. here. What keeps you driven? Like how do you keep going? So listen, the thing about successful people is we're not driven by things or money. 
we're driven by what do we give a fuck about, right? So, like, I care about protecting people. That's what drives me. That's what I say to my wife all the time. I said, look, here's my calendar. You got access to 164 hours a day. Take it the way you want it. But once you got what you need, leave me the fuck alone. Because mm. I love what I do and I want to do it all the goddamn time because it's what I drive passion from, right? So to me, like, protecting people is like, you know, like, I'm on that drug, right? So I don't care for freaking money. Money just comes as part it of the It follows process. your, pa- yeah. You know what I'm saying? It follows my passion, right? So it's funny. One thing that, you know, I don't know who told me this, so, you know, I can't give somebody credit. But, you know, uh, the quote goes is, you know what the difference between a millionaire and a billionaire is? What's that? Billionaires don't give a fuck about money. Hmm. Interesting. Because otherwise you don't get there. Right. You know you what I'm just, saying? You're capped. Because you're because because look, if your goal is to make money, okay, hundred million dollars is a lot of goddamn money. Hmm. Right. So you never get to a billion because you cash out and then you get it on an island because your goal was to build money. Hmm. Make sense? Interesting. My goal isn't to build money. I care about what I do. I so love what I freaking do. Huh? You're going to be a quadrillionaire one day. Yes, that's the plan. <laughs> and it's not because it's I'm like an indirect plan, that. though. It's, it's not because I'm leading towards. It's just that. a result of. It's what a result of what I right. do. I it's love what I effect. do. It's exactly. It's it's if I enjoy what I do, that's just part of life. You know what I'm saying? Like I wake up and I'm pumped to go to work. You know? Oh, that's what we were talking about. Your your daily routine. That's yes. Right? We so never the first hour we were talking about how high are you, bro? No, I'm saying like oh. we, we kind of lost track. We went off. <laughs> no, the tangent. first hour. So what he was talking about is I was talking about how I spend the first hour to like myself. Your day. Right? What's your average day like? Yeah. So the first hour to myself is you know is literally dedicated to me. Right. Right. And I think there's this thing that people always say like oh you know if I if I if I like try to take too much time out of me I'm being selfish right. But the truth is, like, dude, your fucking time is yours. You got 24 hours. If you can't take an hour or two and put it aside for you, what the hell are you fucking living for? Well, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you are the, the success and everything. So if you don't take care of you, everything else exactly. crumbles. Yes, exactly, right? If you, you know, it's the same thing. You know, if you can't take care of you, you can't take care of other people. You're the people. foundation, pretty much. Exactly, yeah. right? So that morning is great for me. And honestly, man, I do come, like, you know, I'm blessed to be able to have... Are you an early mom. riser or do you wake up? I'm not an early riser. So I wake up. Well, like, I have to, hold on. Let's let's just make sure because everybody's uh, perception of early is different. Well, you know, well, he so yesterday he knew he, he had plans to come on the show today, and he sent me a text at 7:08 in the morning, like, "Hey, man, I'm going to give you a call in a little bit so we can game plan yeah. for tomorrow." So that's that. Now, again, this is somebody that's married that has a kid that runs a business. At seven o'clock in the morning, he's already awake, texting. Oh know, yeah, I mean, I wake like, up at five thirty-six, so I don't consider myself an early riser. Because let me rephrase, right? It's early I don't as consider fuck. myself an early riser because I don't wake up in the morning and start doing shit like most early risers right, do, right? right? So like to me, early riser is the guy that wakes up and like, or woman, you know, for that respect, you know, you know, wake up in the morning and like go to the gym and start their day. To me, I'm an early riser, but I'm selfish with my early time. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I spend my first hour with my that's, daughter. That's where I was kind of getting at because the, I, I've, Damn, I've I read this. and heard that su- successful people, especially entrepreneurs, um, there, there's like a, a trend there that they wake up early. You know, they wake up early and, you know, their day's planned out. That's why I was asking you. And you do wake up early, even though you don't, maybe you don't consider it an early riser. I would say 530 is, you know, pretty early. 536. Yeah. Well, my daughter comes running in my room and wakes me the fuck oh, up. okay. Well. So I don't have a choice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so, but what I'm saying is, you know, what I love is like, you know, what I like is like, I try to spend the first hour, you know, I'll be honest. It's either like, you know, spending some time with my daughter watching something, you know, on my, on my phone. Right. Or I'll cuddle with my wife and still keep sleeping you know while my daughter watches something on the phone right, right. so to me i'm like kind of conscious just like awake, family you know and it's my family time you yeah. know what i'm saying so really up till seven o'clock it's my family time and then i wake up at seven and then it's kind of like my personal time from seven to eight thirty right right so like you know i'll kind of go to my own area i get dressed just do what you need to do i kinda. do what i need to do you know and i'll be honest you know like i wake up in the morning and one of the things i have is it's like a gratitude thing yeah Right, so I don't. I'm not religious. I don't go to church, but I believe in God. Like I'm so blessed. Right. Like, if I didn't believe in God, I'd be the biggest asshole to ever live. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. So you know, like you know, I'm saying you know, I believe in God in the sense that I'm thankful. So one of the things that my parents taught me, my mom taught me when I was really young, you know, she always said that, look, Jay, you can look at the guys that have new shoes, okay, and you'll always think that you have worn out shoes. 
okay? But if you look at the guy that has one leg, right. you'd be Real thankful piece. to God that you at least have two. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, she taught me that in a real, real young age. And, you know, look, I'm ADD. I'm all over the place, right? So I'm not the right person to, like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, do a lot of things like that, you know. But what she always did for me was, like, you know, when we go to church, she'd let me go down. And, you know, in our church on Sundays, there was this policy that no matter who you are, if you come and feed here, we feed you a free lunch, right? So, you know, we get a lot of homeless people and things like that in the church back in India when I grew up. So, you know, but the thing is, man, when you're serving people like that and you're seeing that in real time, it makes you understand that, man, what I have is a lot more than what they have. Right. And even if I didn't have a lot, it, it was enough for me to know that I had more than other people. I was just saying right. it the other day. Like, you know, I, I know there's somebody out there that has a lot less than I do, and they're happy like a pig in shit. Happy Jesus. as a clam. Yeah. You know, yeah. So you want to know some truth about happiness? Because it goes, look, dude. I'll nah, tell Jay, you. I don't want to hear that. I'll tell you this. Nobody got <laughs> happiness shit over here. I was going to do a Facebook Live about it, but I'll give them the content. <laughs> no, I'll give it. Do it. Do it. Actually, hey, man. One thing that I thought was pretty cool about us, and we've been this way since the beginning, is we we never want to stop other people from, you know, if there's any way to, to utilize us, to, to benefit their own exposure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you probably have more followers than us personally. But it's like, if you get the views or we get the views, it doesn't give a shit to us. Yeah. I don't give no. a shit. You it's know not about the content. It's about yeah. the people you share it with. You know what I'm saying? It's, at the yeah. end of the day, you know, I want... That's a better I way want, to say it. What? I was say, it's about the people. <laughs> it's about the people, man. And that's the thing, man. Like, I love people. You know, and yeah. I think, to me, I've never found a person that couldn't teach me something new. Just the way it is. It couldn't be, you know, look. Even, even whether it's I mean, good or bad, right? Exactly. Because you could be like, all right, well, don't do that. Like, exactly. I never want to be yeah. a father like I him. appreciate your perspective on life in general. Yes. It's kind of refreshing to hear. You know, you hear all this negativity and all this. Which all is this. tough, man, because every fucking podcast we do, he's like with somebody like, nah, wait a second. I found fault in what you just said, but it's like you don't, you don't just uh, give your opinions or give your advice when it's not like experience based everything you're talking about you know and you've seen work you know what I mean well, it's I put like into action and it's right. a 10,000 hour rule yeah, you know right. I never I mean look dude you know you know one thing about being a leader is you know as a leader people believe in what I care about and what I talk about right so you know honestly if I don't be careful with what I say and if I'm not learned that or experience that and I give false knowledge unfortunately you know I have that power to influence people right and I don't want to influence the wrong way you know mm. so I take that power you know look you know with, with with more power comes more responsibility right I mean it sounds crazy but that's how I see it you know so it to me true. it's like you know look I'll never promote something that I haven't learned or understood you know to me ignorance and providing or like spreading ignorance is not something I want to do, you know. Right. So I, I take the yeah. time to learn and grow. There's absolutely no value yeah. in in any capacity for spreading ignorance. Or, exactly. Yeah. There's like, and that's I think that's probably a big pet peeve of yours, actually, dude. Is when because we've had some people, or you know, we we know people that they they spread this information, and you know, like where the fuck are you getting this information? Yeah, None of it makes sense, and you're ass. just yeah, you're regurgitating kind of nonsense. Um, and that, that's always, that's why I said it's, I'm not surprised really that you guys haven't, that he hasn't been combative with you or I haven't because it's really not, you're not giving us any bullshit. You exactly. know, a lot of times we talk to people or people, not just our guests, but just every day and we deal with bullshit, man. And it's easy to get annoyed with that, <laughs> You just right? called all our guests. No, I said <laughs> not our <laughs> guests. I didn't. He uh, said not all our guests. That's how That's how we good. Like, no I said balls. not just <laughs> guests. Like, I'm a little high. I'm over here like, our guests, y'all suck. <laughs> this is the only episode that matters. No, I'm Like, all our, guests, all our previous guests fed us full of shit. <laughs> nah. But what I'm saying is, you're, nothing gets by him is what I mean. Like, there's nothing that fucking slips by him. Oh, no. I, yeah, I scrutinize. I really George, do. Like, when people are, George, you know. Cut. Cut. Yeah. In all honesty, and I, you know, I, maybe I even make it well, awkward on, to some degree. I, like, there was a reason I started that. And I don't want to cut oh, you off no, because no, I love you, right. but. Um, oh, yeah. When he okay. says these things, because again, like <laughs> w when he says these things, like he believes in what he does. Man, I worked for this company, and I can tell you that hey, I just worked for an alarm company selling alarms. But at the end of the day, bro, he's so he practices what he pre preaches so much that I haven't been there for a few years. And you want to go back? If, if ten years from now I didn't work there, there is still never a way anybody could tell me that you're safer as a family without an alarm than you would be with one. You know what I mean? Like, I'm and so sold into that man, concept. You'll always love that place because it wasn't about me. 
It was about the people, man. It was always oh, about it was the, the people. Best. It, was it was the like, best. It was the best. Like like you said, we had great people. The only was thing there I a camaraderie? Was, I'm sure. Hundred percent camaraderie. You know, Jay, Some of my best like, friends still oh, are from man, there, man. Yeah. Jay, you know, look, man. The big Bro, thing hold is, on. Okay? Let me, I Jay, Jay, give me yes. the way that they're uh, so, and I, not even just their sales team. But so many departments in that company, when the shift starts, but imagine going to work, you're in a suit and a tie, whatever, you're just dressed professionally, you feel good, you get to work and your leader huddles everybody up, right? You have now, so it's you, all your coworkers, and maybe not even your boss, but just one of somebody, one of your brothers or sisters. It's just, bro, it's a huddle up, (laughs) and it's everybody, it's more like a football huddle before a championship game. Everybody's hyped up and ready, and if you're in fucking IT, you wrap it up like, all right. Let's fucking solve some problems today. Let's go. Like, th- that's how they start the work days, bro. People that man. Like, it's it's the other day, it's incredible. Thing. Go to work tomorrow. I, and do I that shit. That, I love that Steve Jobs quote. Right? You know, it says <laughs> you work at Whole Foods. Bro. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he doesn't work at. Like, what do you do? Let's bag this <laughs> deli. No, I what do you do? I'm a machinist. Uh, I've been a machinist for roughly almost 15 years, 14, 15 years. Well, so- but this is where his fucking passion is. That's yeah. why this... Trust me. You know what? It's a job. And that's the worst thing you can do in your life is just have a job. Like, you know, it's like... You know what job stands uh, for? Just you over know, broke, just baby. Just over broke, uh, yes, baby. Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> I mean, shout out to the fucking... Well, actually, no. You know, I'm not even going to mention the company that I work for. you about to get fired. Right? <laughs> but, <laughs> Make sure you tag them, George. You know what's like, crazy is that so... Like, my whole life, everybody's told me I should have been in sales. I I never really pursued that because, like you, I have a passion for people. I mean, you, you... You've seen it. Like, I, yeah, 100%. That's yeah, why yeah, I, yeah. I knew this was going to be a I good fit. I can tell. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, you're a people person. It seems yeah, yeah, yeah. Right you know, I, bat, I, just talking I have to the you, gift of gab. Like. I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty straightforward and, and social and in any setting, you know, that kind of thing. He's a cunt. What? I just wish I could find something that I was passionate about to sell. That's what it is. Because you have to be passionate about 100%. what you're selling, right? I like this. It's like yourself, bro. You're, exactly. you're passionate about yourself. We all, God damn it. Yeah. <sighs> You know Here's the I mean? dead dads. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> we love He's you. Gone. <laughs> He's gone. He's yeah. gone. Where were we? I don't even know where <laughs> we just got. So we were talking about happiness, the truth about like, happiness. Man, <laughs> Jay's got the I'm list. Like, this I'll keep this idiots on track. He's like, Again, check my itinerary. You know, you're taking my book and like breaking it up onto your you're content. A book? Well, I am writing one right now. So, like, you know, it's man, one of those things that... I feel like such a loser. Why? <laughs> don't be bad. You were lucky enough for me to choose to be on the podcast with exactly. you. Exactly. See? This <laughs> motherfucker. Look, if you look at a guy with two new shoes... Right, there's a guy out there look with no podcast exactly. with me, bro. There's guys right now out there just hustling machines without a fucking podcast. Like, oh, come on. Fat of piece you, of shit. But you know what? There's guys out there that are just fat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's see the silver oh, lining here. That's hilarious. Dude, it's so fun. Like, you say something like that. I'm in the barbershop the other day, and I've noticed, man, that, like, this part of my hairline is creeping back a little bit. And I, I'm in the barber's chair, dude, and I tell my barber, I'm like, dude, my hairline's creeping back. He's like, barely, bro. Like, it's going to get there. He's like, but not even close yet. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Just shave it. I don't even care about Like, I just want to be bald, bro. This sucks. And Ant, you know, Ant, the other barber, um, Romeo, yeah. like, he's bald. He's lost his hair. He looks back at me and he goes, Shout out to son Ant. Son of a bitch. Bro, it's like, what I wouldn't give to have that. that hair, right? I was exactly. like, like, don't shave it, bro. You're right, man. Because exactly. like, someday exactly. I won't Let have the grow. choice. Yeah. yeah, One day you might not even have to have what you got today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So don't shit on so yourself. You know it's, what I'm saying? Well, it's like you said, man. You know, like, no matter how bad you think, dude, somebody's always a little worse off. Exactly. And I. Listen, Shout, out man, that's the same right. thing. <laughs> Shout out to Weed. That's the same we thing, love dude. Mary I'm Jen. saying I feel the same way, man. I look at people and I say, look, you know, and this is what's helped me stay humble. You know, yeah. it's like if I look at people that have a lot less than me, I'm like, man, I'm fucking blessed. You know, and I've always had, I come from nothing. You know, like, you know, I've had my, you know, my family provided me great to at least get me something. But like, you know, I earned this business. Like, if I look at like, losers, I feel great. <laughs> Well, you were, you were born in India. It's not about losers, right? It's about... It's, it's, I know, I know. I don't know. He's, He's trying to beat you in right now, yeah. man. He's trying to... But I'm saying, look, look at the losers, end of the day... I feel great. You know, the end of the day, look, I feel bad. I don't feel great. I feel bad because I feel like they don't have the knowledge that I do. You know what I'm saying? That's the knowledge right. is power, They're man. Losers. Like, that's the thing. It's, the, it's, you know, a difference between a winner or a loser isn't, like, their ability. We all can do whatever we want. It's their belief. 
That's right. the difference. I, I a winner agree. believes that he can succeed. That's right. A loser doesn't have that There's faith no in himself. There's no difference between you and I. It's just that you know what? you you have overcome certain obstacles where let's say I probably have let them defeat me. I have a question. Actually, I, I want to know. No, something. I like that. Continue that. So, what do you think about that? What do you What do you believe? I that? feel like I, a loser. <laughs> I, was say, I think I was done. You're not a loser, right? <laughs> Jay, look, you you hit it at home. Okay. Yeah. The only thing that's different is 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 I valued my time differently than you have. Okay. Right. You Absolutely. have the same resources. 150%. You have the same resources. I've just applied them differently. You I know am, what I'm saying? I am totally uh, modest enough and and. And man enough, humble, humble enough to admit, yeah, that's absolutely true. Exactly. That's I'm no true. special person. You hey. know what I'm saying? Like, look, but. I'd love to take credit and be I'm awesome. I'm not, okay? Well, I just have learned. There I've just spent be... some time. You know what I'm saying? You, well, you can't cut yourself short either. I mean, or sell yourself short because there is a clear line between, let's say, somebody who's successful and somebody who's not. You put into action what other people think. Just think about. I think what he's saying though is that's that the, there's no like miraculous gift he was given. Right. He wasn't you know, born like, like with superpowers. You, you I'm not. I wear the pants same thing, one leg at a time. You, right, ever right. you know what I'm saying? It's you ever listen way, to David man. Goggins? Have huh? you heard? You ever heard of uh, David Goggins? Have you listened to the him? Well, no, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> so no, he's um, you know, he's uh, he's just a badass. He was like an ex Navy SEAL, and he just went through I the have, craziest yeah. shit that you can imagine a human go through. But he said that, you know, like at one point he was like almost 400 pounds working for a pest control company and he wasn't anything spectacular, just a fucking regular guy that was like fat and was just like, yeah, this sucks. Like, just a regular and he fat just decided, he's like, yeah, now he's fucking shredded. You know what I mean? Like he went through the Navy SEAL training a few times, I believe. George, can you check, look him up for me real quick, dude? Got like how, what he's done and he's just accomplished so much. He's an author now, has a podcast, he's a motivational speaker and his, the way he, I'm going to say sells his product for lack of better terms, but the way he markets himself to everybody is that he was just a person and he decided and started creating these habits. Like, I don't care how much it hurts. I'm going to run every day. And then dude, so you just fucking do it. We're going to be all right, bro. Thank you. It's a Nike commercial. Just do it. Yeah. I'm saying like, that's right. But know what you want and be who you are and do what you need to do and let the people follow that believe in you. Let the others that don't go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's the truth. It's like, you know, the problem is, look, man, it, we're as people built to do two things, okay? And it's a fact. We're built to do two things, okay? We're <laughs> that's, built to that's either your way fulfill of me David our David mission David. or, or fulfill somebody else's mission, You're okay? Right. We're built on the world to do that, right? But what happens is we are so doubting programmed. ourselves that oh, and programmed. You know, you're right because it's our doubt, our self-doubt that, oh, man, if I tell people what I want, People are gonna laugh at me, right, dude? I, right? Yeah. It's the truth, though, bro. It's um, let me finish this. Yeah, yeah, like, 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 it's, it's, it's truth. Yeah. Because like, guess what? You know what you want, but you're just fucking insecure to share it with the people you've got here, right? You got 200 people that still believe in you, 500 views that you get at your highest level, right? But you still self doubt yourself and go, let me help other people because they're not gonna want to help me. But it's not the fucking case at all. If you can actually be honest and vulnerable and be like. Guys, help these guys find more people that want to believe in this mission and purpose and help them grow. People will help. You know what I'm saying? People will help. Give me a You're so right, man. It's I, I true, was going to say something. I don't even remember what it was because it doesn't compare to that. We're all like mesmerized. Like, <laughs> I, told, right. I, I did tell him. I said, hey, man, I, I told, I'm like, it's impossible to talk to you and not be inspired about something. Like, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You know what I mean? Well, like, you know what it is? You just need somebody sometimes. That's done it. That's that been there. That breaks the fucking, like, He just can't monotony. handle his fucking whiskey. That's it. He's out. <laughs> we killed the goat, I'm gonna bro. I'm going to die right here. Right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I, I did have a question, though. So, it, as a business owner, obviously, you, can, you saw that dude as a yeah. fucking moth or something like in here. Pterodactyl. So, uh... <laughs> so... Working, um, you've obviously had partners and shit before, dude. Like, bro, we're not talking about a sex life. <laughs> <laughs> how can it? 
what do you how do you what's your best way to settle disagreements with your partners or whenever you had them it's because you know there's three of us so, so we might not always say hey this is the best say something, man? no i'm just i'm looking for advice on somebody that's done it and overcame it bro He's, You're like how do you tell your fat annoying loud mouth <laughs> partner <laughs> No, Shut so like, or, or how Shut do we, how do we stay, for, like, if, all right, so, this is, like, I, I, we said earlier, we plateaued, and George might think, hey, we could be doing this differently, and Jay might say, hey, we could be doing this differently, I say, hey, we could be doing this differently, but it, it seems like they, if they're out of whack, like, how can we figure out a game plan, and, and you know, what, what are some strategies you've done? I'm sure, like, disagreeing with business partners is not an uncommon thing. Not at all. No, there's a, di- a dynamic there, obviously. Yes. Well, let me let me. What is this? I think so we, we could probably that benefit from that. I paid a lot of money for, right? So me and my wife, we go to therapy. You know, two of my friends that were divorcing right when I was getting married, I asked them both, you know, what could have been differently? And they said, I would have gone to therapy a long time ago, right? So I took that like, okay, go to therapy before shit gets bad, right? Mm. And figure out a way to succeed through it. And one of the things that, you know, our therapist said was she said, keep fighting. She said, if you're fighting, okay, you give a shit about what you do. You care about the people you work with, right? Or like mm. you care about the relationship you're in, right? It's like if you and your wife stop fighting, I'll be really worried because that means you guys have given up, right? right? So look, you know, you know, disagreements is part of life, okay? But the way you run through that is by taking personal accountability. So what you do is you take personal accountability through that process, okay? You say, okay... You know, the three of us were in a room and we disagreed. What could I have done differently to make a better case where it didn't need to turn into an argument? It could have just been a conversation of the disagreements that we had, right? Because argument means that you weren't communicating well together. Make sense? Disagreement means that you have data that this guy might not know that you need to share with him, right? So he can agree with your aspect, right? So what people end up happening, they do is they get caught up on the person they're arguing with as opposed to take personal accountability and say, hey man, maybe I'm not presenting the data that I have in a better way that the person I'm arguing with could get my point. Receive it. They receive it in a different way, right? So argument, if you look at it like, man, when the fuck is Jay gonna change? Nothing's gonna change. But if you take personal accountability of, where am I missing Jay, right? You'll find a different way to find an outcome with him that's different than everybody else, right? And look, dude, I'm not perfect in this. I fought with my ex-partners and broken off those personal relationships because, you know, my ego and, you know, and my pride pride got the best of it. But the accountability guy in me got those relationships back together because I know I'm successful more with them than without them, Mm -hmm. right? And my accountability guy said, fuck your ego, fuck your attitude, Get, get back to what you do well and right, get it right. done, right? And that's what, you know, that's why Barry's back. That's why Brian's back. That's why we're building something great together hey, Andrew, because they're all there. Andrew's back. Andrew's right? back. And when he he was just, you know, just shooting the shit with me and he's just like, yeah, man, come back. And I I told, like, my last memory of it was what we said earlier, you know, like, it, it wasn't great. Like, there was, there was a lot of changes going on. I wasn't completely sold. Barry wasn't there. Brian wasn't there. It just, it seemed like I was no longer bought into the direction well, it was going and, the and leaders it, you had didn't weren't there anymore exactly know, so i respect that you know look so, josh i don't blame you by the way right for the record look you know my ego got the best of me okay i got rid of leaders that i should have done a better job communicating with okay that look i made mistakes in my life i'm not perfect okay and look you don't become fucking successful without taking risks and failing you know what i'm saying like i failed a lot Okay, yeah. so I'm not saying everything I've done has always been a fucking you know everything I, I don't have park. I don't right, have right, the right. mightiest touch. Okay, right. I failed a lot. <laughs> it's just, just I don't I'm not I, my ego that gets the best of me in certain spaces, right? Still isn't as big as my accountability is, right? So you know I let the ego get the best of me, but within six months, five months, three months, a year, You're back whatever back. that is. My accountability gets the best of me again and says, look, dude, you're a winner. If you're not working a relationship out, that's what you need to succeed. You need to fucking make it work. You know what I'm saying? And that's partnership is what that's all about, right? Look, you know, with my wife, we will fight. But we come together eventually to talk through it and get to an outcome because that's what success is. Success is learning each other's perspective, right? And, you know, I have this, like, awesome thing that says, you know, just because you're right, 
doesn't mean he's wrong. Is that the six and the nine drawing? Yes, the six and the nine drawing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because you're right doesn't mean he's wrong. Well, you both could be right because you're looking right, at different things. Right, just totally. <laughs> and here's way. Erica oh, and Hi, I love somebody you? that's with <laughs> Erica. No, that's Erica. No. Oh. oh, my God. Okay, got it. <laughs> um, so just to, to something funny that I actually read about that, that specific image you're talking about, if you haven't seen it. What, a 69? It's, <laughs> yes, it's a 69. There's, there's a six and a nine drawn on you know the pavement or something and yes. you're looking at it hey no 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 here here check it out because it's it's an interesting photo and it says that like you're you're on that side i'm on this side i see a nine you see a six we're right. both looking no, at one thing you see a nine too right no so no no no, no you both see a nine or you both see a six no 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 because if, if i'm if if the number is here in between you and i i'm gonna see a nine and you're gonna see a six if you're writing it based on the english language are you gonna put wow. a six in no. Really? You gotta go there? <laughs> Look. All right, so right there. 69. No, there's only it's one, 69. though. There's it's not 69. Yeah. Look, it's like this, Jay. Your head is in Stop. between Look, her legs. That's all it is. That's what the picture is. It's not 69. No, it's 69. No, it's not. Because I'm saying up. either way you switch it, it, you see a six. Make sense? No, no, but that's that's Look, the so image is no, what I'm showing you right now. It's not the 69. The image is no. this. Watch it. 69. No, it's not. Just hear me out. Just hear me out. If you think I'm wrong, I'm wrong, right? But just hear me out. What do you see right now? 69. What do you see right now? 69. That's the point. The point is just because you're seeing 69 doesn't mean the other guy isn't seeing 69. Ah, uh, true, true. It's the same thing. We're talking about a different image, though. Yes, That's a we are. So this image is about just because like you have a six empty, half full. don't mean this isn't a six either, right? Right. You're just looking at the different data. You know what I'm saying? So he might be looking at something completely different than you. Right. Doesn't mean either one of you are wrong. It means that you're Just not looking at right. the same thing. You know what I'm saying? That's the bottom line. See, the reason I like I'm I'm thinking about a different image, and I think it made a little more sense is Keep because going. there was a. So imagine right now between you and I, there's a number nine. Mm -hmm. Like what the example you just showed me, it's the same number, and we're twisting it. Yes. But now right now, if you see a nine from my perspective, it's going to look like a six. Yes. From your perspective, it's going to look like a nine. But I'm not wrong because I see a six. Based on what I see, I see exactly you see a I nine. See nine. Exactly, With, they're different answers, but they're both neither right one of answers, is wrong. depending upon our view. Now, I saw right. a nice. Uh, a I thought it was. So I like that. I've never that, seen it. That, that was the image that I was talking about. But I saw a comment on that because I saw it on Facebook or Reddit or something. I saw a comment that was pretty interesting, and I, I got a little chuckle out of it. It said, "Well, no, dude. Like one of these people is wrong, no matter how you spin it, because whoever wrote that number." had it from his perspective where they intentionally wrote one of those numbers and these two guys just stumbled upon it and they have different ideas. Neither one of them understands that they're wrong, but one of them is wrong. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's a different deep. perspective. It, it was, I thought it was just cynical. I looked at I read that and I was like, well, that's so pretty cynical. That's why, but it that's made me why laugh. I've never seen just one. Yeah. I've seen 69. So I've never seen that one. Because that if cool, you though. flip it either way, it's a 69. Right. But if you look at it from your perspective, you might think the other person's wrong, but the other person isn't wrong. They're just seeing something different. Every you know time saying? somebody says even, you know, I, I don't even and like the, the number 69. It just leaves a, yes, you do. Leaves no, a bad wait. taste in my mouth. Well, I'll give you a real-time <laughs> example, right? He's so the real-time example you didn't catch that, that is, my wife is creative <laughs> and I'm analytical, right? right. So to me, it's left about, brain, right brain. you know, it's left brain, right brain, right? But, you know, look, dude, the, the, the funniest thing about... Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, yes. uh, let me interrupt really fast. Jeez. Do it. Do your thing. Your wife's a woman. You're a man. He never said that. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Two totally different beings, right? So obviously you're gonna we're gonna see things. Not you know they're gonna see things different. Not just you and your wife. I'm saying you and your girlfriend, me and my girlfriend, you and your yes. boyfriend. You know, just whatever. We always see the things differently. <laughs> we never see it the same way, right? right. That's okay, the whole here, point about ahead. it. So I don't disagree with that. But what I'm saying is, you always find someone that you connect with that is completely different from you. Believe it or not, it's because you aspire to be that person, right? Like my wife is more, you know, out of the box. She'll take more risk and do more things like that. Where I'm some 
in conservative More in some safe, ways and vice versa, right? So it's the same thing. Like what I love about my wife, my wife is she's young and energetic. She's you know, the thing that me, you're not. Yes, exactly. Pretty right? much. Yes, that and, and that's what you find in a person. A, a person you interact with and engage with, right? You're never looking for, I want the same exact person as me. Right. You want you someone want. that aspires you to be somebody different, right? Right, So, right. like, my wife is super creative, right? And if I want to throw a party, I call my wife. I'm like, you're going to do a way better job than me. Right. But if I want a budget for the party, I'm going to do, do a job. <laughs> yeah. So, it's like, you know, her and I are different people. But when I use her strength and my weakness and combine the two. Hello, Erica. Hey, Erica. Hi, Erica. She's Everybody's back. watching those, Erica. <laughs> She's uh, she's actually, she owns Legends. She owns Grub. Nice, that's what's up. <laughs> Erica, you right there? have you been drinking? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't drink. Oh shit. I don't dude. drunk, I don't get drink. Bro. Yeah, right? <laughs> I've never seen her that lit, bro. So I, she just walked by barefoot. I totally agree with you with what you're saying because you know what? Like, me, myself, I'm a very impatient person. And I envy. Patient people like that just I'm just like, man, I wish I I had that. I wish I, I wish I really, really had that. And do you find that in, in yourself? Like just yeah, things well, that like with, your with Sasha, flaws I, or- with Sasha, when it comes to specifically how she interacts and deals with and treats her family, she's very compassionate, you know, like and she's very um good Awful. at it, just just good at making people understand you know that she cares and she loves them like I, I i see her interact with not just our kids but the way she interacts with her family you know her mother her sisters her brothers her boyfriend and i yeah her boyfriend <laughs> and i've always felt like wow like I, you know that's something that i i didn't grow up with i don't have and i know that i don't have like i don't have the same traits she does but i want my kids to have them you know like i want my kids to feel comfortable hugging each other telling them they love each other telling me they love me you know, it's weird. Like, I was never. Do you tell I your was, kids that though? Of course, of course. You do? Yeah, absolutely, Good. all the time. And I'm, and then I'm you proud know? of you. And I, thank you. And uh, I've even noticed myself just with my mother. Like, I'm not. Uh, it's weird, but I was. It was almost like an embarrassing thing because we never did it. You know, like it was never just like, a, "Hey, mom, I love you." But I've noticed, you know, over the past couple of years, um, realizing that like that's something that she has that I don't. I'm going out of my way to say it more now to my mother, and you know exactly. it's just—it's a weird thing. Yeah. Dude. Like I'm not trying no, to sound not, fleeting. No, believe it or not, dude, it's yeah. not a weird thing. That's no, why you not. married her, okay? You yeah, married true. her because you wanted her to make you better, okay? And true, honestly, true. that hits home for me. It's the same thing for my life. Like you know, mm. it's funny, it's hilarious because my wife would be like, "You were never close to your family, and now you're so close to your family. Like, what the fuck happened?" And I'm mm. like, "You happened. Mm. The way you mm. love your family, and the way you respect your family, and the way you treat your family inspired me to wanting to do the same to my family." You know, and I tell her that. Like I say, look, dude, you made me better. You know, you made me love my family more than I did. And when I see you interact the way you do, it made me a better person. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, look, it's so funny because you know what happens is when we marry a person, we marry a person that's completely different from us because, you know, they want, you know, we aspire to be like them, right? Mm. But then when we're mad. Like, I want a vagina. You know, right? But listen, <laughs> but watch this, Jay. Man. But when we're mad, we're mad that they're not just like us. It's right. true. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. but, but I didn't marry her because she was like me. It's, I married her because she was completely yeah. opposite of me, and she could teach me something different than what I aspired to be, right? Yeah. To me, it's all about yeah, absolutely. a fucking program, a plan, a structured outcome. You know, to her, it's like, hey, what are we going to do to Ruba? Hang out on the beach. And I'm like, I'm like, Man, no, I, I can't do, do that. Like that. Like, I'm like, go with the I got my eight point plan for today. Like, here's what are you going to do? She's <laughs> like, I don't know. I'll figure it out. And I'm like, fuck you. I wish I could just walk through the day with no fucking plan. Like, so you, I, I'd blow my brains out. You have out. never like, ever just like, laid out on the beach fucking. No, I have. I have. For like 15 minutes. Because of her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because she aspires to be better than like, You know what I'm saying? But that's not how I'm programmed. Right. I'm programmed to wake up with you a plan. Get- Done. You know like, what I'm saying? So, like, she makes me better because when we're on vacation, she's like, chill the fuck out. Right. We're just going to lay chill on the, the beach. fuck out. And I'm like, damn, that sounds crazy, but I'm in. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's like fucking crazy. But, like, you know, literally, we were on Aruba. We're in, on a beach in Aruba. Let me ask you, so why are That's you like that? I mean, it, uh, I want to hear about the beach in Aruba, uh, bro. We can get back. <laughs> okay, yeah. I just want to know, like, like re- really fast, like, really quick. Just. Why, why, why do you think that you're so regimented? 
No. Is it is it is it is it your self motivation or is it is it a cultural thing? Like you were born in India. It's a is death it a death thing? I'm sorry. To be honest, it's a dying thing. Okay. Okay. I've lost a lot of good people like young in my life, right? So you know, I'm the type of person that to me it's like, what legacy, what impact am I going to leave, right? Right. So like you know, and honestly, you know, yeah, if you, you ask me this, if you asked me this question fucking three years ago. The answer would have been different. It would have been like, I'm trying to copy. I'm the best I am. I want to go out. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I've gone through a lot in my life, and I've learned a lot, and I've grown a lot, right? And, you know, honestly, it's a death thing. I've lost my wow. father when I was young. You know, I lost Sonny. Sonny, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is that kind of like your you know? why type thing? It's my why type yeah. thing. It is. You know what I'm saying? It's because, like, you know, it's, it's because I want to know that I've made enough impact because there's a lot of people that died raising me, right? Like, I look at my father, and I say... You know, he passed away, you know, when I was eight, but, you know, he was trying to start his business to take care of his family. And, you know, to me, it's because he worked so hard. You know, this is my story, right? I'm not saying it's reality. Now, were you still, in, were you born India. here in America? Yes, yeah, so I was born in India. In India, yeah. right. How, how long were you in there? I moved here when I was 15 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I was raised for my, most of my part there. And then I had like, you know, family support was great for me. So I value family now more than ever. You know, because of that, because... You well, know, that's a great uh, motivator. I mean, 100%, great, man. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, it's just, it gives you a purpose to live. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dude, I've had everything. I've owned Ferraris. I've owned Bentleys. I've owned freaking every car you can imagine in the world, right? And those yeah. are all things that come and fucking go. You know what I'm saying? They don't really what make you happy. They give right. You, they I, give I you, can see that. They give you happiness in the moment, right? They give you this, like, feeling that... It's like a shit, status you know? thing almost. It's a too, status, you know? right? They give you this, like, small... Happiness is really internal. It's... My top three for happiness, I haven't yeah. said, but number one, you actually just said it. Happiness is an inside thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's how I feel. People have this thing that they attach happiness to a future thing. If I get that raise, I'll be happy. You know what I'm saying? If I get this, I'll be happy. But fuck that. I'm alive today. I'm fucking happy. You know right. what I'm saying? That's, that's absolutely, my that's goal. Right. I wake up in the morning and I'm breathing. I say to, I say to God, thank you, man. I'm fucking still here. Oh, you know? yeah. I know oh, yeah. a lot of people that, that passed away way younger than me. Mm -hmm. Sonny passed away way, way younger than me. Well, right? every day there's you somebody know? that's just fucking, you know. Gone. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, my life isn't, to be honest, my life isn't in my hands. It's, it's finite. Yeah, that's you know right. What I'm saying? It's finite. But, I'm, I'm, but I don't fear death. You know, I just plan for it. Right. I buy the right insurance so my family would be taken care of. Okay. You know, I... I didn't buy I, shit. If I die, it's on them, you know. Yeah, okay. well, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Guess what? They'll figure it out without yeah. DJ. Unfortunately, that's throw the Throw me in life. the fucking dirt and call it a day. I yeah. don't give a shit. It's don't throw me life. in the dirt. Let me rot out in the fucking sun with my dick hanging out. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be dead. I don't... You know? Exactly. And that's the truth about life. You know what I'm saying? Dude, we all have an... We only have a finite amount of time. And the fact is, we don't know when that ends. You know? That's and right. honestly... When I was the worst in my life, it was because I didn't have a plan for death. When was that? When do you think you was the worst in your life? Before you started? Five, or four, three years, few ago? years ago? Because, you know, I'd make a lot of money, but I'd spend it on a Ferrari before I'd spend it on a life insurance policy to make sure my family was safe. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then I'd fucking be in my head like, why the hell... You know, like I'm not. You could do better. Like you're critiquing yeah. yourself. Yeah, exactly. You're like, you know I, I can I'm do. I'm critiquing this. myself in the sense that I'm not stable. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, dude, happiness is part of a process. That's okay? right. Look, I'll repeat this, right? So I'll tell you. Yeah, I think you gave us one. I want the other two. Yeah. So the first one you actually guessed is right. Happiness is an inside thing. Yeah. Okay. Most people think happiness is something that you get from out, out there. Right. That if I something get a raise, tangible. I'd be happy. If something else would happen, I'd be happy. No, it's I'm happy the way I look in life, right? And see, so if you know, I'm happy crazy. when I wake up in the yeah. morning, I'm freaking happy. See, I, I, you know, me being as social as I am, I constantly talk about probably the more dreary, doomy things of life. And I could probably really give the impression to somebody that didn't really know me or that's maybe getting to know me. Uh, like, man, that dude's all fucking doom and gloom. But the reality is, is that... You know what? I talk about those things as a subject matter, um, but internally, I, you know, I I am actually really happy. You know, like I don't ha I don't even have shit. And I don't even give a fuck. You know, who gives a shit about things? You're not right. gonna die with them. You know what I'm saying? That's the bottom line. You're I not kinda, gonna take I it with look, you. I I like you in the same kind of uh, perspective. 
I feel so blessed about, you know, my life over 40 years. Uh, you know, it's very, very eventful. I mean, I've been around the world. I mean, it's just, I can Good. go on and on. But yeah, like things that I, wow, man, I have learned so much. I've interacted with so many different people and have learned from them. Um, and like, what are we listening to back there? <laughs> what are they doing? It's like, <laughs> I'm listening to you. I'm it's just, just going. so. What was I even talking about? No, you're going Being happy. happy. You're talking about oh yeah. So like me world. personally, learning a lot of things. Even on, even on my Facebook, somebody just read my Facebook. They're like, man, that guy's a miserable motherfucker. But the I reality is, is that I'm I'm actually not like I want to talk about these things just because it's interesting subject matter. Um, to me, but internally, I'm like fucking. I'm good. Like. And I hate to say it almost sounds kind of dreary and morbid. Like, if I fucking hit, kick the bucket tomorrow, I feel like, okay, I'm good. Like, I, I that, that you did all right. It's not a like, bad whatever. thing. Whatever. I just, not, yeah, hey, listen, you know, you enjoyed the day, your time, you know. If you, you feel did. that way, well, Jay, if you feel that way, share that. I probably fucking laughed like 75% of my life. Like, that's, that's a lot that's of fucking. That's awesome. Yes, that's it high, is. That's Dude, that's awesome. Day. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, it's I like, swear to God, I'm fucking envious. That's awesome. That's, uh, you know, I, I look at that and I'm just like, man, I, I could find fucking humor in like. So let me ask you a question. I think that's why people so always told it. us to start this, dude. Like, yeah, dude. Like, watch know, this, right? So let's change that conversation. Yeah. Oh, shit. You got $100 million in the bank. You died today. How much are you taking with you? Nothing. Fuck it. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, that's right. What fuck the hell? It. Fuck it. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm like, like, what are you Sell talking your about? house. Fuck Shoot. the college fund. <laughs> spend yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Spend it, it now. Matter. Great. Guess what? They're going to get college loans. Okay, and then fucking some Democrats gonna get elected, and they're gonna wave all the fucking magic wand to be paid anyways. That's so right. you Shout save all Andrew that Yang. shit, and it's worth nothing anyways. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? So like, who gives a shit? Just enjoy your life. That's why I really, really try to do. Like, you know, on in in my microcosm, in my George capacity, like, this guy's out of his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, George, I, don't make, I would say George is definitely a left brainer, you know, very like analytical. He's like, what? This I definitely don't make tons of money. I, you know, um, I'm getting older. Like, there's so many things that I could be like, yeah, I'm, I'm fat, and I'm like, I don't even see that. I don't even, I don't think about it really. I don't see it. I don't. I'm just like, well, in the mirror, I might see. It. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. <laughs> but I, I just Does like, your wife got a problem with it? I'm not married, but oh. um, I, I'm not. You know what? I don't know. I, I look at her and she, because she's beautiful. Well, you look at who? You just said you're not married. Well, she's <laughs> well, yeah, my significant other. Yeah, my girlfriend. They're she's close. beautiful. They're close. And she's like in shape and she could be a model. And I look at me and I'm like, why does she look at like, why does she like me? Well, hold I was on. actually hold on. talking. Let me ask you a question, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's called, I'm going to hit that. It's I'm going to hit that, Jay. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to kick in your gonna. I got this, Jack. I'm going to hit this home, right? Why do you think she's with you? I don't fucking know. In fact, I was just, I was just, ask her. Like, hey, I was going to ask I you, Jay. You. Jay, Jay, I challenge you to go home and ask her that. You know why? Guess what? You know why? Why? Because if she's in shape and she's doing all the right things to her, that comes out of pressure. Does that make sense? The fact that you're happy and you are who you are, that's what she loves about you. It's aspirations, right? You're probably she's right. She's you because she sees you as this guy who just puts a smile on her face it just okay. doesn't and, and doesn't come with this fucking baggage of I need to be in shape and I need you to be in shape. So yeah. you help her succeed, right. right, in a different way, Jay. And honestly, man, that's the thing. We all aspire to be with somebody else that's not just like me, right? Right. So a woman in shape doesn't always want a guy in shape. She yeah, wants man. a guy that will let things go. Fuck the gym. Yeah. Right? Like, my, and my waistline? Like <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, shout out to Beth, by the way. Thank you for putting up with my shit all the time. Jesus Christ. No, you know what? What's crazy is that I was just having this conversation with another one of my friends. His wife is very much in shape. She like she used to compete and whatever. Blah. You're talking about me? And he's also kind of like, you know... And, and we're Man. texting each other. He's kind of like manly. He's husky. <laughs> he's husky. He's big boned. We're like... I was like, man, why, what's with our, what's our, our wife and our, our, our girlfriends... What do they see? What do they? Bro. <laughs> they probably see right through the fucking. I ask myself Listen, that. Bro. I ask my buddy. They see Danny. that happiness. <laughs> fat Jay, or whatever it's called. <laughs> they see that happiness in you. Probably. I mean, you I, see what yeah. I'm saying? Look, dude. Like, you know, look. That's what I love about my wife. I wish I could just wake up without a schedule every day. You know what I'm saying? I've disciplined myself and trained myself to do that. But so I do you have to try not, not to have a schedule? Oh, fuck yeah. You really? See? I wake up in the morning. The first hold thing on, I Hold on, hold on. I don't mean to interrupt you, Jay, but. 
you're talking to a man that just showed us a list that he shows his wife that he needs in a woman. Of then course I he has to try to take a, a break. for everything. Bro, well, you just showed fuck. us. Like, all right. I mean, okay, that's that's pretty. Yeah, I can see. You Dude, know, it's extraordinary. Absolutely, he needs to remind himself to just chill. In Trello? <laughs> well, then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I know you do Trello. I yeah, we do fucking right. Trello, man. We try to do Trello anyway. Trello is there. Trello is definitely there. Too. I always do much longer that, man. Yeah, yeah, do you right. think, man? <laughs> oh, shit. I, I like those socks. Yeah. We got to get a picture of those socks. <laughs> so weird, bro. That's lit. It's all good. We'll wrap up soon. Yeah. Oh, what time is it? It's been an hour and 40 minutes. Oh. I even need we still have to do the commercials, by the way. Yeah. I like this guy. He's very positive. Yeah, I told you, man. He's he's legit, dude. He's solid dude. He's not he's not a bullshitter. I mean, yeah. nice guy, good guy, successful guy. We never even got to the fucking trannies. Jesus. Holla, bro! This is our first episode. We didn't talk about gays. We didn't talk about abortion. We didn't talk about trannies. Try. I don't think you can say tranny anymore. Why? I don't think you're supposed to. I think it's just fuck? offensive in every sense of the word. Oh, man. I'm so I'm so you know, fucking sick and tired of hearing what's offensive. I don't give. Hey, put this on camera. I don't give a flying fuck. So I feel like I thought that way for a long time, and then I realized like if it if it doesn't mean anything to me, like if the word doesn't bother me or it means nothing to me, but if I know that it hurts this person, I just not. Well, saying. of course I'm not gonna say it. yeah. That'd be, well, that's what it is. There's tact. But I'm saying, but as tranny. a whole, like, we're talking on a podcast, to say the word tranny is like... Where did I go, right? So speaking of happiness, <laughs> what about the word tranny? I, that came up because most of, most of our episodes, we talk about, you know, like, really divisive kind of things, you know, where there's some debate going on. I don't know if we were social if we were doing it on if we were doing it on purpose to try to say, all right, well let's keep it interesting. Who the fuck knows, man? But it was coming up a lot. And he, I don't know, he said tranny. Normally he's just like, listen, I don't care if you're offended, because he doesn't he never comes at it from a place of hate. Yes. You know, it's just like it's the thought process is I think it's just a word. You know what I mean? Like I'm not saying, hey, you're a transsexual, you're worth it's just a word. You're worthless. You're like, it's like I'm a descriptive saying, word. Put it this way, okay, dude. Hold on, at the end finish. of the day, go ahead, I All apologize. Right. My okay. my thought on it was I used to just not give a fuck and say, Well, I don't care. I don't mean it offensively, just deal with it. Where I feel like I'm I I like to consider it as growth and I'm not saying that you're not growing. I just this is my perception of it, is that if it means nothing to me, the word is I don't care whether I use it or not, but if I know that it really bothers somebody else why not just pick a different, you know, like, not just not say it. I don't, it and even I, though I don't mean it I, offensively. I 100% it, ag- agree with you there. If it doesn't 100%. matter to me and if it hurts you, why do I not just not do it? Right. I mean, I'm not going to go around, you know, saying. Uh, tranny. Yeah. yeah <laughs> hey, you fucking tranny or this and that or whatever. Well, I'm not going to go around saying stuff like that. But if we're, again, if we're talking about a subject matter and the word tranny comes up in the subject, we're just hmm. talking about the subject of being a transvestite or transsexual or transformer or a trans... <laughs> am whatever then I'm you know and you get offended by me saying the word tranny like I think you got problems not you I'm saying you just well anybody. my point is I agree with you Jay right so like my point is this and then people ain't got problems they always got fucking problems okay people got problems because I'm too happy People tell me they don't like me because I'm too happy. It doesn't mean what? I'm going to change who the hell says that? Right? What's wrong with those listen, people? Listen, there's this points. People will You're say. You're adding like, too much value to my life. I don't <laughs> like you. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? <laughs> who says that? Look, at the end of the day, you know, what I'm saying is, you know, we're all people. We have yeah. things we say that are good, there are things that we say that are bad. But the truth of it is, that makes us who we are. We're not perfect beings, right? That's right. And at the end of the day, if someone is listening to your podcast and they're offended by that, I mean, they'd be offended by the fuck you've said eight million times and shit we've said about right. 14 million times. So they will never listen to your podcast, right? People that listen to your podcast are people that are probably your real, right? That understand who you are as people. And if they judge you for a word you use, even though that's not defines you as who you are as people, then I don't think mm-hmm. that's your audience to begin with. True. So fuck them. You know right. what I'm saying? And I'm not saying in a so bad if way. If it wasn't that word, you know, it was going to be something else. Anyway. It was something else that they would have been already offended. They, yeah, they were the probably looking anyways. for something to be offended by. Exactly. The and that's the problem, something. dude. Law of attraction is that. Yeah. If I'm a person that finds things offensive, I find things that are offensive. Right. Him what do you find much, offensive? Nothing. 
To me, I find things interesting. <laughs> no, nothing. I find them interesting. Oh, I'm surprised interesting. that you could find, you know, using the word tranny in your day to day, interesting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It doesn't make it bad. I don't know the last time I used the word tranny. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't mean it in a bad way. You remember I'm just, that party? Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just surprised to be like, party. wow, like this was a conversation today. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, but again, that doesn't make it good or bad. It's it's look, people's perception is what they take it, right? Right. So it's like well, if you, somebody I finds mean, it bad, yeah. that's their perception. You well, know what I'm saying? They would have found that things other bad. If there's hate behind what you are saying, then I think it becomes 100%. bad. Yeah. But I mean, if you're just talking about a subject, but I guess like you could say the word, you know, you're saying it this way, and I'm, I'm, like you said earlier, I'm trying to see from your perspective. If there's hate behind it, you could say tranny, you could say transsexual. The way you mean that is still going to be equally as fucked exactly. up. You know, yeah. if I'm just like, oh, those right. transsexuals. It's the context. That's worse than me saying, oh, like my tranny friend. And that's so what I get it. Well, remember when, I, when, you know, when we were I don't talking about the it. Chuck and Brad when they were here? As, as our they're guests. not trannies. No, they're not trannies. But and that's what I was saying. Like, don't. They were comedians, and oh, yeah. they're they're talking about you know sometimes when they're on stage, you know they they offend certain people with uh, certain jokes and stuff like that. And I always ask them, I'm like, well, listen, th- doesn't the audience, the person that's receiving the transmission, the communication, don't they have a responsibility to take things in the context that it was transmitted from? Not necessarily. You shouldn't be tiptoeing around. I mean, it's impossible. First of all, if, you, if especially you're in front of an audience of thousands of people, you can't tiptoe around every single person's, you know, uh, offensive. You'll be you'll be burning and dying right. if you did that. They, it's they, like you know, the audience it's like has a responsibility. Chanel feeling bad about charging fifty three hundred dollars for a fucking handbag. Mm. You know exactly. What I'm exactly. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly like, right. If they right. felt bad, they'd never get there. You right. know what I'm saying? So the truth of the matter is, it's like, dude, it's all of our people's perception. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't. If, if somebody and finds me, if somebody finds me offensive because I'm so happy, Which, God bless you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm not gonna tell you something otherwise. Mm. That's your thing. You know what I'm saying? Like people are like, I can't trust him because he's so happy. It's all good. You don't. I don't need you to follow me. You know what I'm saying? See, I'd rather have that's somebody else. That's a strange else. statement. You've heard that before? 100% I've heard that before. Let me, oh, you can... I, I just want, want, it makes sense. I can, you can see this, too. And I think maybe the way you, when you word it that way, but it, some people come across as, like, cheesy. Like, all right, something's not right there. He's way too happy. You know, there's somebody that we play poker with who is extremely happy, happy and people... I wasn't going to name drop, but people think he's a fucking serial killer. Because he's like... <laughs> but do they really think that? So let me put it this think, way. Put it this way. They As think we, that he's untrustworthy because of it. You know, so I, I can... When we were I, like little infants and we're growing up through life, we learn from, uh, you know, experiences. Give me an experience where somebody was too positive or happy and that ended up fucking you Enough. The Catholic priest. <laughs> and enough listen, listen. to be like, wait a minute, Bitch. that guy's too happy. Fuck that guy. No, but I'm Baseball saying he's like, a dick. <laughs> yeah, but listen, but like what you're saying, yeah. it doesn't affect the guy that is happy. He's living happily. Right. It's the guy who fucking doubts him. And, and that's what I'm saying. Makes sense. That's probably, There's enough people that do that. Why would though? somebody doubt that? It could be because coming from a place mindset. of insecurities too. You know, bro, like it's if a you mindset. Are unhappy, and you see somebody else super happy. Like I, I guess I learned. Like, hey, makes you insecure. I learned yeah. things like the hard way. Like I got to be bit by a fucking, uh, you know, you need to fuck me, and then I'm like, oh shit, well I ain't fucking with you because you fuck me. You. No, you know, I'm not saying physically. But that's I'm a saying, positive person. You're you know? already positive in general, Jay. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like your life is happy in general. Like you said, you smile 75% of the time. Dude, you know, you're hitting the I fucking... smile, but I do laugh. That's... Good laugh. Well, actually thing. smiling. Hey, 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 laughing. Yeah, yeah. Can I, I give you a fun laughing. fact that you could take home with you? Sure. You can never think bad if you're smiling. That's not true. Smile. Smile right now. Jay's a piece of shit. No. Well, you're I, saying that, but you're laughing. Yeah, yeah. You know maybe I'm, I'm not thinking. Bro, it. I'm saying, yeah. I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not, this is, this is a proven fact. If you consistently smile, the message you send to your brain is a message of happiness. So your muscles send a message to your brain That's that wild. gives a message. Bro, I've never been able to smile and think ill of people. You could try, try to do it, it because right you're now. trying to prove a point, but in general, it's never the case. If you smile, I can't imagine watch. somebody saying, "Man, I don't trust you because you're too happy, though." Because, but that's their, but that's what? their mindset. Because in like their mindset, up. but it's their in their mindset, they're saying, 
there's no way this guy could smile that much. I'm so, so I think miserable you're, we're programmed that to think that way. That. It's like it's too good to be true. You know what I mean? Like exactly. Some, something's it's too not good right to be there. True. And that does not mean that I don't have bad days or I don't face you adversity. Just don't let that shit define Dude, you. I fucking lost millions. But I look at it and I go like, Same, God bro. needed me to lose this money today for me to learn how to fucking do it differently another day. You know what I'm saying? So it's my mindset. But there's people that doubt that. Start. You should be a life coach, bro. That's <laughs> <laughs> it, dude. I mean, say you know you have a big company, a lot of employees, a leadership role. I mean, you kind of are a life coach in a sense. Yeah, to so I'm here do podcasts. Yeah. I'm hoping That's this right. is gonna like pay bills one day. <laughs> we were like, I'm hey, remember when he was just this? Yeah, when he was only right making up. 17 yeah. million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, but George, what time we got? What, he's what like, time yes. is he's that? He's like, I've got enough to fucking hit this like hours All right, ago. So we're he's gonna... like, shut the fuck up and take Wait, a shot. We didn't go even home. talk about the fucking Perfect. what straight parade in fucking Boston. We don't have that. Talking about straight That's, parade? No, no, no. Remember I told you earlier, like, we'll have bullet points in case we hit a dead zone and we don't know. Like, just That's so we can so. bring something up. So let's talk really about straight parade. I've not learned anything about it. All right, so it's, it's new a, to me. Opposing let view me, let of the pride parade. Let me editorialize this a bit. All right, so as you know, June is Gay Pride Month. You know, it's Gay Pride gay Month. Pride. It's Gay Pride Month. <laughs> okay. Or, or um, LGBT Equality Month. Whatever the politically direct term to say it is, it's that. Gay Pride, LGBT LGBTQ+. Plus. Plus. So it's that Pride Month. And, you know, there were some people complaining on social media or to news outlets that, well, hey, we should have a straight pride, straight pride parade. If it's truly about equality... We should be able to have one too, and I guess Boston actually sanctioned a straight pride parade. I think it's hilarious. So all right, so we're gonna wrap this up. <laughs> well, you, just, you said, "Hey, we didn't even get to talk about it." I brought it up. Hey. So listen, here's what I, I, I say. Too. Okay. At the end of the day, everybody has a way to celebrate something, and if they can celebrate it, let them celebrate it. You know what I'm saying? Look, dude. You know, I, I don't. I'm gay. At, at the <laughs> risk or sake of, so at these now I love gay people let me just say that I love gay people whatever I, I don't care what anybody does in their bedroom title the but, episode so. yeah right <laughs> but there are kids that are at these parades and they see the the lewdness they see the we guys walking around slapping each other's bare asses in in um in leather yeah, but they can, they, they can see that on, like, TV, too, like, rap videos or yeah, any TV show. Point. Like, so they can see point, slapping well, a woman's ass. Is that, I guess, parade appropriate, meaning in front of children? And that's where I have a problem. Hey, you, you can suck each other's dicks. I don't give a fuck. You can celebrate it. I don't give a fuck. Don't do it in front of kids. That's weird. Yeah, but that's my just, point is this, though. I'm not taking my kids to a gay pride parade but mm. some parents do but they do because they want to open up to their kids and say that look we're liberally free like and if this like means this. that this is what makes you happy don't feel that i would feel otherwise right so look jay you know to each their own is what i say right oh, absolutely like you know to me i respect that like if you're a, if you're a parent that cares to take your per, take your little people right like take your kids to influence them to know that hey look if you're a gay I'd accept you as a freaking who you are. is that the message that's being conveyed? Or is it just sexual, you know, uh, is it more of a sexual nature message that you're sending to kids? Meaning, you you don't take your kid to a parade to teach them tolerance or diversity or anything like that. What they're seeing is guys walking around in collars and... Di- leather dildos hanging off of them. Jesus, you know, is that what shit. is that what every pride parade is like? I feel like you're talking. I've about never been to a pride parade, so I don't know. I, sh- I shouldn't say. Well, I bet the majority is people marching with signs saying, "Hey, equality with a heart." That's you would like color. to think that, but that's not the. That's not the. Well, I'm saying like maybe look, I should I'll go to honest. a pride parade and actually I'll be see. Fir- I'll be first they take it, you know, to, to you're a making it seem like a fucking village people video, dude, throughout the whole streets, like. Is that what that's it is? More just accurate. assless chaps and well, gags. Saying, well, is that yeah. all it is? No, but it's yeah, that's more accurate than saying you know it's just people walking. Well, I'm saying, street. look, you know, at the end of the day, look, you know, it's 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 if you're a conservative person, right, yeah. and you care Jay's about, not conservative. You know, well, ah, you know, I'd say I'd say I'm a blend depending upon oh, what topic Jay. I'm talking. Oh, that's Jay. Jay. Yes, 
I can say that. But my perspective is this, okay? At the end of the day, you know, to each their own. That's what I say, mm-hmm. right? If you have your family there, I respect you for it, Jay. Because at the end of the day, what you're basically saying is that, look, I want my kids to learn everything. And I'm going to teach them from the lessons they learn. I'm not going to teach them the way I was raised, right? So I'm saying, like, look, dude, you know, at the end of the day, you know, yeah, of course, there's always those liberals that are super left. And then there's always the conservatives that are super right. Absolutely. But the ones that are willing to be in the middle that says, like, look, I want you to explore life. Those are the right, because to me, I don't know if left's right or right's right, right? Mm. To me, all I know is I want to give my kids options, and I want them to pick what's right for them. Well, let me ask you, with that being said, is there a line? Is is there a line where you're exposing too much to children now? Well, then that's that's the line that I'm, as a conservative, going to keep. I'm not going to take my kids to a... Not necessarily you personally. I'm saying just... But I'm I'm giving you my example, right? Yeah, right. That's what we have to go by. I'm a conservative, right? I'm going to tell you this. Right. I'm a conservative. I come from, like, I used to be a Democrat, but I'm I'm a Republican now. Right. Okay. Because to me, Democrats are preaching ignorance while Republicans are preaching conservatism, right? When I was a young kid, I wanted to be a Democrat. But today, when I have two daughters, I want to be a Republican. I want to be conservative. I get you know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, I'm going to be honest. I'm biased. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not right. going to tell you, like, you know, I'm not. Would you take your children to one of these parades? Depends on what age. I wouldn't take them at four, five, six, but I'd take them at 10, 11, 12. You know what I'm saying? Because at That's 10, 11, 12, I would tell their... Hey, if you wanted to love a woman, okay, I would support that because I love you as a daughter more than I love you as a woman first. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, like, to me, my daughter is my daughter first, and she's a woman second. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if her happiness was in finding another woman that she could fucking love, I would support the hell out of it. And I would be there for her because, you know, otherwise I'd be a complete dickhead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm being honest. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm being honest. Just because I was born a certain way does not mean that what she believes in is wrong. It goes back to that 69, right? Like, with a daughter, it's No pun intended. Hey, hey. You know, no pun intended, right? <laughs> but it's the same thing. Just because I see the world one way doesn't mean her view is wrong. I'm here to accept her as a person that she is. But I want that to happen at the right time. You know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't take her at six st- or seven. I'd take her at 11 or 12. And that's where the sticky points would be, you know, as far as, let's say, for a, a society. Um, when would be the right time to expose your children to anything sexual in nature? Um, you know, especially something as extreme as BDSM, as, you know, some of... The when you say part, when you say extreme, that's your perspective on what's extreme. Well, no, I, I'm saying that's, that's no, no. just a regular enjoyable. I'm not saying use my, for some use my standard. I'm saying extreme. Whatever that means to you. When is when? What, what in your family and your children? Um, some would be very opposed to taking. I would. Ne- I mean, like myself. I don't would you never take parents my daughter. Can, but you can just not take them. Yeah, well, that's exactly. what I'm saying. That's I would never choice. take yeah. my daughter to that to that kind of parade. Not because they're homosexual. Not yeah. because they... I don't give a shit what you're doing. I, I don't even care. But because of the ext- extreme that the, the parade actually goes to. Like, you know, some of the participants is very, very, you know, to me, in my eyes, in my conservative eyes, I'm like, yeah. wow, I don't well, want my daughter to see all that. That's based on, like, what your opinion but is. I'm what saying, a good, yes. Like, not, not a good parent, but your parental opinion on when your kid should be exposed to it, where... Some parents might just say, well, hey, it's a natural thing. I don't care if my son or daughter is seven or eight. Like, I'm okay with them seeing this. But it's It's not not natural to say that. It's not natural to walk another guy in a leash. It's not natural to walk anybody on a leash. Well, well, okay. You said natural, so I mean... (laughs) Yeah, I mean, when you say natural, it's not natural now. In a thousand years, who knows? That might be the thing. Like, It would never be natural to walk a kid on a leash ten years ago. Now it's not too uncommon. Guess what? We're blessed to fucking live in America. Yeah, you don't have to decide. We get to decide what's natural and what's not. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much. You know, dude, like, that's the fucking yeah. best part. I've grown up in India, and I've seen, like, things like that, right? So yeah, these are definitely first say, world problems. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. And I'm saying, like, you know, look, you know, it's funny because I think I created some of my, like, you know, when I came to India, I mean, when I came to U.S., and I lived here for, like, eight, ten years, I went home, and my buddies would, like, grab me by the, 
you know, like by the shoulders, and I'd be like, wow, that's gay. Like, don't do that. But that's not <laughs> This was they, after like, you came to the U.S.? Yes, yeah. Wow. And when I'd go back, because, like, all of a sudden, I had this new perception of life that, like, you can't do that. But to them, it's like, dude, we hug all of them like this. Yeah. You know Actually, what you know what? It's, it's only, like, really in America perception. in the westernized it's, world. Yes. So it's like, kind of like thing. you know, hey, you know, they put you in a box. You know, right. like, you're gay. If you have a buddy of you like grab you by the yes. hand and like hold you and like mm. you know like tickle you because that's, you know what I'm saying like so it's like it's like I've been to the Middle East and they they hold guys hold hands and yeah you know, exactly they're not and that doesn't really it's gay yeah that's so strange like, because uh, to me as an American I'm like that's super gay like yes right. exactly right so it's a perception gay thing, right there, you know what I'm like saying that. like look you know and that's the thing what I appreciate about USA right is that we all get to have our opinions. Right, of right, course. and like we can stay to those opinions, yeah. and nobody fucking prosecutes us or kills us for our opinions. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And like you, like I said to you, I'm super conservative. You know, look, as you become a parent, especially parent to two two daughters, right? Right. You you all naturally go more towards conservatism, right? But it doesn't mean liberalism is wrong. It just means it's a different perspective. It's a different view. You know, and I aspire to be like that. You know, in some ways, I'm like. I wish I could take my daughter and let her watch a guy holding another guy, you know, in a freaking chain. But to me, I'm conservative that I'm saying I wouldn't do that to her until she was 12 or 13. But I would do it to her at 12 or 13 because I want her to know that, hey, if you chose like a woman to be your person, as a father, I would love you and respect you regardless. Right? So at one point, I have to give that message to her, and I'm forced to explain to her that I'm more of a liberal than I am a conservative, right? But when she's six, seven, eight, nine, I'm fucking super conservative. Right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I got a daughter to protect her. And until she understands what that relationship is about, I'm not going to turn into a, a liberal, but I will be a liberal to give her what she needs. Because at the end of the day, I want my fucking daughter happy. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, at any cost? At my cost. Well, I, I think that's understood, being a father. Well, I'm saying at any cost is that, right? Because when you say at any cost, you judge it against well, I, my I say, cost or her cost, right? So my cost is, oh, I'd like her to be straight. We'll put it this way. But her it. cost is her father fucking hates her because she's a lesbian. I wouldn't want that. From your perspective, obviously at any cost is, let's say, at, at your cost, right? Yes. You would give up yourself for your daughter. 100%. Uh, yeah, that's yes, probably not even, doesn't anything. even need to be said. But, um, what is that? It's a mosquito, mosquito hawk. Yeah, get it. <laughs> um, but what about at her cost? Meaning, and I'll give it an example. Let's say your your daughter or your son says, hey, you know what, Dad? I'm, not that this is ever going to happen. I want to go around. I'm going to start killing people. That's what makes me happy. Let's, would you can? I'm just using an extreme example. That, Come on. No. Would you condone? <laughs> no. Some, but if that's what makes her happy, that's, what, that's no. what I'm getting at. That's because, what makes him or her hurting jail. somebody. She believes in jail then. Because then she's fucked up. Yeah, but remember, law, guess, law doesn't equal morality. Like, you say no, that no, because no, killing no, people that, is no. wrong. But there's certain things that you don't do. There's crossing That's hurting somebody else. It's you know what I'm saying? Chill. But, like, if that's you're what I'm saying. You said at else, your cost, but yes. at her cost, would you? At her cost, no. Right. You know, that's where I believe in. Right, okay, right. make it right or wrong. It's what my beliefs are. You know what I'm saying? Beliefs are never right or wrong. It's a matter of perception. Yeah. They switch what they are. If my if my daughter believed in killing other people... Jay, you want another one? I'm good, thank you. I'm good too. Thank you. Can I please have one more log when you just? Yes. If my daughter believed Super in true. killing other people to make her happy, I wouldn't believe in my daughter. Because I believe I would give her enough principles mm. and made her understand what life is about. And so why that would be the line important. for you. Not necessarily murder, but I'm saying things along those lines. Um, so you, like you said, you, you would give up yourself in, obviously at any cost. But would you ill-advise or let's say go against what she what actually makes her happy maybe knowing that probably not the best way of life i mean it's extremism right like if you're talking about if she cared about killing other people to make her happy i wouldn't want her to live and as much as i love her as my daughter you kill her? i wouldn't not i wouldn't kill her <laughs> but i would turn her in you know what i'm saying yeah. and i'm being I honest felt, i always felt like if i faced that could not like what if you're so what if your daughter had came home though and she told you, like, holy shit, like, this is what happened. I killed somebody. My first response to her would be, turn yourself in. Oh, I don't know if I would do system. that to my son. 
Huh? I, I don't know if I would do that. I know that, but that's your That's fears. crazy. Yeah. It's but my, my point is this, though, Josh. I would think that you would have raised them good enough. That that's course, not a course. decision you have to make. Right? No, I hope not. So but I teach I'm my just kids, watching shows or reading hope shit. Hope has nothing to do with it. Okay? I'm being honest. Fuck hope. Okay? Yeah. It's about the principles and values you teach your kids. Mm. And that's what it comes down to. It. Every day I teach my daughter that people is how you accomplish life. Okay? Dude, I wouldn't be nobody if I didn't have people helping and supporting me to succeed. There's Even a the lot of wisdom spent, in what you're saying, I believe. No, but it's true. The time he spent with us and the way he made lives better... We are in a better place because of him. Right. Okay? And that will never No matter how minute me. that is, how or minute big. or how big it is, it was, it's those There's steps. an impact there. It's the story, right? Where I am today, if I'm happy with who I am, it's because of everyone that's helped me to get where I am. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same way I think. Like, as much as I would want to support my daughter, if, if she was a killer and she believed in killing people, that's my boundary, right? So you right, need to right. know your boundaries, and that's my boundary. I would never let that happen. Okay, but if she wanted to self-explore and she wanted to, you know, be a different person and she wanted to be with a woman, you I would her. absolutely support that right. because the last thing I would want is my relationship with my daughter being ruined right. because of her beliefs, right? So I'm always willing to overlook her beliefs. But I'm not looking over willing to overlook her 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 I think those are comparable though because one it's hurting someone, you know. It's inflicting harm exactly. on another person. One is not, you know. So it's yes. like that. That's, that's those are two, two different line. things to compare. Let's take that equation out. Let's say killing people that are dying of cancer and they want to die. I'm just. I mean, know. that's kind of crazy. Cause that's what I mean. We're, we're, yeah, we're well, getting I'm we're getting very that, very specific. That irrelevant. No, I, I mean, I might even. But I'm saying I don't. I think, might even you consider know, look, her a hero at that point. The best part is this: we're living a world. Where all of that is a hypothetical, it's not a fact, right? So at the end of the day, in this, you know, I'm blessed because I was able to be in this country where my daughter can grow up being a lesbian if that's what she wanted to be. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And like, she can. She has a choice. She's blessed to be able to even think like that. Yeah, because some countries, not, they don't dude, tolerate they that shit. And yeah. They kill you, right? So like, that's dude, wild. thank God she's fucking has that option. She can at least choose to be her. But if you choose to be an evil person, I wouldn't tolerate evil, period. You know what I'm saying? That's the part, bottom line. What's crazy is to think of how different it is, though, because of where we are and how much you're just the geographical location of you it matters, personally. It, matters. It, it affects how you feel about that because had you been born, you know, 800 years ago and you were a Viking and your daughter grew up and she had a thirst for killing people, you'd be proud of her and you'd say, hey, she should be in a leadership position because she's a better killer than everybody in this fucking army, you know, or in this community or whatever the case is. So it's weird that that's not just a, I don't feel like that's a human, you're not born with that feeling that you have. You're blessed, dude. That's what I'm saying. We're blessed. I think we're taught it. I wake up you know? here and I'm going like, dude. Nature I get versus the, nurture. I have choice. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. Choice isn't, isn't, Something that's given equally to everybody, right? Dude, we were born in... Some people here. don't have choices, that's right. Yes, exactly, dude. They don't have choices. They're fucking stuck. Think about people right now in Venezuela. Yeah, they're fucked. They're fucked. You know what I'm saying? They don't have choice. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, they don't have choice. Mm. I'm fucking How bad blessed. is that situation? Because I'm not up to date on what's going yeah, on. So it's like it's anarchy just, almost, right? Yeah, I mean, it's because, you know, they're figuring out who their government is and what they want. And it's things like they're going like through that, a revolution. Right? They're going through a revolutionary war, wild. right? And I'm going to myself like, dude, I live in a country where I could fucking speak whatever I want. You know what's And crazy? I'm not going to put in jail for it. You know I, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, that's where my kids are born. You know what I'm saying? No matter how hard it's for them, it ain't going to be that fucking hard. You I know what always like, say that you know about saying? America. Yeah. I'm like, if you don't make it in America, you're not making it anywhere, number oh, one. Fuck. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, of course. <laughs> like, but that, I, I don't, and I'm not saying that you are. But I feel like a lot of times some people use that as a crutch for bigotry. You know, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying that you are, but some people will. Why did you just single me out? <laughs> well, no, 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 because you just, you just conveyed that message. I'm sorry. And you too. I'm not trying to you say too. you are, but you are. <laughs> no. But yes, you're Wait, right. I'm not saying specifically but, you, but I'm saying but, a J. Yeah. But someone else. <laughs> but somebody that runs with Mason. A larger two of the J. No, but just because it's. America is the, the greatest in the sense of ha providing opportunities to change your life for the better. 
that doesn't mean that you should just, you know, shut up and deal with some issues that we do still have here that are injustices of whatever sort. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, not saying that you. What do you mean? That. Like, be specific. All right, so, to give you an example, um, immigration or abortions. For, abo- for if you're a woman and you feel like you should have the right to have an abortion, whatever you have that right. I don't think that we should be able, you know, or anybody should say, well, listen. Shut up. Just deal with that because you still have it better off in America than you do anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Is that making any sense? 100%. You know oh, what I'm saying? Saying. That's why I don't, I don't think how good we have it should be an excuse to be hateful or um, unempathetic to, to people that still don't feel like their opportunity well, is Well, let's think- on the other side, right? So let me, right. let me put it this way, okay? I've had a daughter, okay? And when you go into a freaking, you know, when you go into a room... And you saw a heartbeat of a child, and then you say, you know, because this was done incorrectly or whatever it may be, that we should just kill that child. Mm. I don't believe that's the right thing to do either, though, right? Like, as a woman, you should always have a right. And I don't, I don't want to take that right away from any woman if they're going through a bad time, right? But if you decide you want to keep it, and then towards the end when they're a human being, and you want to kill it, I mean, is that really the right we should offer a woman? Of course not. I don't you know think I'm so saying? Anyway. Like I'm saying that child doesn't have somebody to protect them. So I don't disagree that, like, look, women should always have a chance. And, you know, even this Alabama thing, I know it's a big deal, and I don't disagree that, you know, they're going extreme with it, so, you know, but the truth mm. of the matter That's is... their culture. It's a cultural thing, but the truth of the matter is if a woman decides that they, she wants to keep a child through the first, sem- first trimester, right, and they get to a second trimester when that child becomes a heartbeat and a human being should we then label her that woman to say kill that child when well, there's hundreds of other people that would be happy to adopt a child that's healthy and happy mm. okay because they don't have that choice right so like look dude you know I don't agree with everything that the Alabama law says and I like look at it and I do, you know, and I look at it and I go like this is kind of a little bit extreme right but the fact that, look, dude, if it's a child, let it come to this world and let it go to a family that can't afford to have a child is still better than, mm. you know, killing, killing a child. It. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just more convenient that way. You know, I think going yeah. back to what he's saying, though, he, he's saying you can't use the fact the, that how America flourishes, you can't use that as an argument to say, hey, uh, we're, you know, this might be a social injustice to you, but you're in America, so shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think like, that should go, ever be the case. Yeah, right. That's and what you're and saying, I don't right? disagree with that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because so like, it's that's like, the point. The that's problem like you is saying this, as right? A, hold on. The problem I is this. Like, they the always argument. pick a choice, right? So either people pick all the way left, that the child has to be killed, or I'm sorry, the child has to be saved at no cost, or it's all the way to the right that the woman should have a choice, right? Where's the happy medium? I don't, I don't feel you know that way. And here, I get what you're saying, and I feel like I, for most of my life, I kind of had that same thought process like there should be a a line and I think that it's really difficult for me to ever understand that line because I can and I have kids you know and I I, I've been I'm very close to somebody that's have you know I have had abortions as well and I've contemplated an abortion my first son you know when we got pregnant the first time you know I was we were only 18 years old you know that was definitely an idea that kicked around I don't think it's okay you know I don't agree with it I don't think it should be done under anything other than extreme circumstances but I also don't have the the blessing or the what's the word uh, other word what's the opposite of a blessing uh, the curse, cur- curse? The, the, the curse some might call it as being the one that's going to carry that person in my body so I'm not I don't want to sugarcoat abortion I don't think it's oh I hate when people say oh it's a sack of cells or shit like that you know it's just a, a fetus it's still it's gonna be a person no matter what it's gonna be a living breathing human being call it what it is I think it's killing a baby and it is terrible as it sounds you know I don't think it's okay but I can't see me or the government or anybody forcing somebody to not be able to control what's happening in their own body you know what I'm saying I don't disagree it's just a, it's I mean, it's, it's a weird to thing. agree, but I can't disagree. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's still yeah. your body. But I mean, yeah. you know, at what point do you say, you know, God's giving you the ability to build something in yourself? And if you take it for granted and kill somebody at a certain age. I don't think you know laws should ever be made up based on, and I, I'm, I'm not, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but when no, somebody says, disagree. well, God says, you know, and I, 
air quotes because I'm not really a religious or a faithful person. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but I don't think laws or decisions that affect everybody should ever be based on that kind of thought process because. So Wait, question, but right? somebody could 100% be... But this country was founded... Can we agree this country was founded on Christian b philosophy? But this country was also founded on... The secular... Uh, 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 the uh, Christian philosophy when they got here, but also with the accepting that the not everybody... In the law, not everybody has to yeah. follow that same philosophy. You've got you know? this, con this thing called the Constitution. Right. right? And it's awesome because it fucking gives us like some sort of a vision... And purpose to live a well, guidance and exactly yeah. you know what I'm saying so like I don't disagree with Josh right like but I'm saying like let me ask Portia right you had to go through that tough decision right you were 18 you had the first mm. child well you decided to keep it right but do you think that that decision should still be on you if you decide to keep it all the way to the third trimester and then decide like I no longer want it when it's a human being or is Me? it like, look, dude, you no, get the I chance can't. when you, with this is before, it becomes a, like a heartbeat, right? You have that first trimester to choose that, right? So make a decision. Yeah. I think you should don't have be a before fucking asshole. Conception. Make a decision, right? I don't disagree like, with you. You know what I'm saying? So like, but if you make a decision. But that's how I it, think. And I right? can think like well, that. My point is this, okay? Like I'm saying what everybody else proposes is, hey, if your son doesn't come out perfect. Kill and him. if he's got, if he's got fucking... You know, Alzheimer's, or if he's got mm. fucking... Autism. You know, autism, kill him. I oh, don't fucking The doctors that. actually give you that. Th that was the craziest thing I thought when we were dealing with our second pregnancy, is I remember the nurse or the doctor coming and saying, hey, we can run... No, we can run this test. And I'm like, what is that test? And they said, oh, we can let you know if there's a chance your baby has this, you know, uh, a condition or this condition. I'm like, why would that matter? They're like, I don't know. So you can, like, explain what your options are. And I'm like, what? Because... To me, I already had a son at this point, and it was like, are you are you prepping me and kind of telling me like, hey, you if can it's kill super, it if you want. exactly, and that's how I felt, and I was I was blown away, and I was just like, I'm like, no, 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 and don't even ask us that again. Throughout, I said like, every time we ever come here, don't bring that up again, you know, because <laughs> I mean, you, all you're telling when you when you. Have, Bro, do you remember when your daughter's pregnant, bro? Doctor's appointments happen a lot. Exactly. But I was just like, listen, oh, I meant under the I was circumstances. Like, yeah. I'm like, the only the only message I get is that you're telling me that this kid might be better off if he is not born with whatever these conditions are. So now, the way I relate that is to my younger brother that has yeah. autism. Are you telling me that he's better off dead? Like, it's why is he staying alive? Right? Yeah. Like, if he wasn't alive, it would be more convenient. Right. But well, at one point, we got to give up convenience, right? And that's convenient the for who? Face. Convenient for who? Because the convenient only. Convenient for the parents, but not right. for the child. That's what, what I'm saying. saying. Exactly. Convenient. Convenient. Guess, guess what? Guess what? If, I, if my wife couldn't have kids, I'd gladly adopt a child that had gone through adversity and given an opportunity hmm. than live without a child. You know what I'm saying? Right. So to me, it's like, you know, like, come on, man. Like, make a fucking decision, okay? Don't be a fucking coward. You want to be in the first trimester and make a decision that you don't want that child? Okay, I respect it. You have that chance. Mm -hmm. But if it gets to the second trimester and it becomes a heartbeat and it's a freaking human being, get somebody else a chance that cannot even have a child right. that's okay to raise your child than let you conveniently kill the fucking child because it was more convenient that way. Right. You know just keep thinking. So like, I keep thinking back to again, and I, I don't because I'm not that guy. I don't consider. My, but I'm no, not an extreme Josh, feminist, you, you know. Ex but I exactly because you still said stop talking about that with me. As yeah. much as I might be a liberal, my child is my child, right? That, and right. I'll figure and that's it out. how I feel. But at what point do you make that decision to say, "Look, dude, it's fucking immoral to kill a human being." That can't have a chance to make yeah. a decision. It's like, imagine if somebody's saying, like, hey, you can kill a child, you can just stab him in the heart up till four years old. Mm. Up until, oh, you up know until what they're like, 16. <laughs> what's next? What's next? They're going to say, hey, if you think your child's stupid and he turns four, just off just him. Stab him in the heart and yeah. move on? Like, you know, at what point you got to go, like, okay, maybe I'm not the right fucking parent. Yeah, right now they're somebody in the third else trimester. Is somebody else yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? That was New York so, like, that passed you, the third trimester. Don't you think that it's exactly. crazy? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's bullshit. Like, yeah. you know, like, what is next you fucking get a child to be born yeah and then the, you decide i don't like the way he looks i'm gonna stab him in the heart and move on like that's yeah. fucked up you know what i'm saying like, i agree you know i what agree I'm saying? like that's fucked i just up. think the big variable Dude, like, here is you know, who the host is you know that it because i can say or you can say it doesn't matter who the host is it doesn't matter excuse me who's carrying the baby but it only doesn't matter to us because it's not us and it never will be like we're men you know what i mean we we won't know what that is but my point of this way okay 
do you believe that if your wife would have died, it's matter. part of the fucking like? Okay, so I'm gonna be something morbid, right? If your da- if your wife passed away while she was giving birth to your child, you think you would treat your child any differently? Of course not. Of course, that's my point. So my point is like. Why enable other people to make that decision? That's bullshit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you believe that your child should have been born and brought to this earth, leave him the fuck here. You don't want to take care of him? Give it to somebody else that gives a shit about him. You know what I'm saying? Give it to the person that can't have a child. They'd be happy to take a child with autism than take a child that's not born at all. Okay? You know, that's one of the things that I was scared of. I didn't know if I could have a child, right? But when I had a child, I was fucking blessed. I was thankful for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So look, dude, you know, look, you know, and it's this, this catch 22 because, you know, it's great. I'm talking about this whole year than thou approach because, you know, I had healthy kids. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm taking accountability for my shit too. I'm not tra- saying that otherwise. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, like, kids are kids, you know? I- Give him a chance. Let me play devil's you know? advocate really fast, just really quick. What do you guys think of, let's say, the child that is going to be born with something, let's say some kind of disease, whatever. Obviously, their quality of life is not going to be anywhere near. And I'm not talking about just being autistic. I'm talking about something more severe. Um, let's say maybe they're born a quadriplegic or, you know, even more severe than that. Um, whatever it is. How do you guys feel about in that capacity about abortion, um, knowing that if the child is born, their quality of life is going to really suck. Yeah, I feel like the only time, yeah, yeah to, kill to, it. to say to no, well, to say to just kill it or end the life, I feel like the only time, unless that human being can convey the message that I I would Suffering. rather die than be alive. You gotta give it a chance. Yeah, that's why I'm okay with like assisted suicide. If you're exactly. a consenting adult and you have terminal, Ill- you have a terminal illness, and you're telling your doctors, "Listen, I'm done. I'd rather be dead." It's different. By all means, brain, you should you be able to. Yes. Things, you know? But you agree when it comes with that? To- so I'm saying, like, assisted suicide is one thing. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, I say the same thing. If my family's gonna lose my net worth. To just to keep me alive, just so they could fucking say that let me live for three more years. I'd rather you kill me and keep the money. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's how I think. Right. You know, but the other side of it, you know, it's a tough call because, like, you know, you know, if you're playing God, you're a chill. If you're a child, and you, again, you know, like, you know, it's like, look, you know, it's tough because I can't empathize with that. You know, I you know, and I'm not the type of person to just bullshit. You right. know what I'm saying like. You know, I don't know what I would do when if my child was paraplegic. Like, you know, I'm, like, I'm yeah. not gonna lie to be like I'd feel one way or the or other. Or even imagine, you know? like, you know, I mean, having I'm saying, to make the decision maybe to pull I'm a the coward. On your child or you know, something. maybe That's... I'm a coward and I might quit on him. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into something that I mm. don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not gonna pretend to be fucking older than thou. But one thing I do know is that if my child needed me, you know, I'd be there. And more importantly, like, you know, if a child is born in this planet. You know, you know, it's their perspective, their nurture, dude. It's not just nature, it's also nurture, right? It's a little bit so of both, yeah. Exactly, it's a bit of both. So if, you know, if that child was born with autism, I can't change the autism fact of that child, but I can give him love and affection to show him how much I care, you know, and, and or right, if, right. even if I want to quit, my quit should be I let him up for adoption or let her up for adoption, then like kill her. You know, like, yeah. like, look, dude, there's like, you know, if, you know, I say to myself and I say to my wife all the time, if we couldn't have kids, I don't care what I got to adopt. It was better than not having any at all. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's like, you know, fuck it, man. Like, you know, it might be hard for someone to take care of that. But people that do, they care for that thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's and, where I fall in the sense of um, being, I, I consider myself very anti-abortion, but pro-choice. You know, like that's. My, my big debacle is when the government starts getting involved on what you're doing with your body. And I understand there's a life in it. You know, there's, it is what it is. But ultimately, it, it's, there's a life, but it's still in somebody's body that should make that decision. Exactly. But my point but, is then make hold on, it let me, fast. Let me, let me finish. You're pro-choice, make it fast. You got first semester to make Here, your choice. The, the point that I was trying to make is that See, I wouldn't even go that far. A, lot of people, a lot of people use the argument of, oh, well, they're born into poverty or don't have homes. None of that shit matters to me because if you take that kid six, seven years from now that's impoverished, an orphan, 
and you just get, ask them a simple question like, hey, kid, you know, would you rather be alive or dead? 100% of them are going to say, oh, alive. So rather who, alive who is anybody well, to make... no death, though. Right. Well, who is anybody to make the decision that just because a kid might be born into a bad situation that you should end its life before it has a they chance to start? They could still be happy. That's even, what I'm saying. Even, let's yes. say the child exactly. was born a, a quad or a paraplegic. That kid could be internally they could miserable be exactly. and in a terrible situation for the first 19 years of his life, and then be president or whatever the kid. You know what I mean? Like the only know, way yeah. they'd be happy is in their childhood is because of their parents, though, right? I mean, I was because that's with nurture. Great looks and think of. Did <laughs> you ever see the mer- the movie uh, Life Is Beautiful? <laughs> I don't think I have. It's just oh. to keep it simple. It's about um, an Italian Jew. And him, his family, his wife, and his son were captured by Nazis. They were taken to a concentration camp. The kid was six years old, but his father... There's such thing as an Italian kept, Jew. Kept, his father kept his, um, his spirits and his energy so high by always kind of masking what was going around that this kid went through a concentration camp, went through that struggle, but was smiling and laughing every day because he didn't understand what was What's going on. What's called? Life is a world? Life is beautiful. I like that. I oh, it was an incredi- that. incredible movie. It's black and white. It's an older movie, but it's phenomenal. <laughs> because I think that shows you, like, hey, man, how especially something as innocent as a child, the reality is what you create, you know, like as parents or as anybody as an, in a position of influence over the kid. Whatever reality you create is what that kid's going to understand. You know what I'm saying? So if- It's true, though. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing, dude. You know, I lost my father young, but, like, my mom... The way she fulfilled that love and the way she gave me love, I never felt that missing. You know mm. what I'm saying? So it's like it was something that, you know, like, you know, again, dude, like, you know, it's like nature and nurture plays a part, you know, and that's the most important part. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, it's like, OK, you know, you might be paraplegic, but if you get to a family that believes in you and cares about who you are, like you said, even in concentration camp, they can grow up feeling positive and, and excited. Because it's the approach that the life takes to it, right? It's like, you know, it's like, if I look at the glasses half empty, that's a fact. Yeah, you have to decide. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or I can look at the glasses half full. You know what I'm saying? When I look outside and it's partly cloudy, that's what most people would say, I still find it partly sunny. It's mostly sunny, baby. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> still partly sunny. You know what I'm saying? So that's in, the bottom line. In roughly two minutes, let's say to, to our viewers, to whoever, if they said... He's give actually a, a specializer in two minutes, so give no, not that long. <laughs> give give us give them a piece of advice that helped you. Like this, probably the most single, you know, most important piece of advice over your successful career and and journey that you could give to somebody else that's maybe looking to aspire to be more positive personally or more <laughs> financially. You hit him with a, asking for a friend. Like, yeah, just give me some advice, sir, so my friend can hear it. Well, no, I'm talking about to the viewers. That maybe I get that. it, I get no, it. I get that. I, get I respect it. that. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to this happiness thing, right? Truth about happiness. Because to All right, it's great. You came out. Let's close it up. It's happiness type thing, right? <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, I'm going to get through that. But I want to give you my five principles of success. Because Hell to yeah. me... Oh, I've been waiting you know, for you since the beginning. It's the same thing he's talking about, right? No Number one f- is positive mental attitude. Okay? That's you know, great. If I think like my, you know, what I perceive in life that I'm going to get is what I get, right? Right. When change comes my way, I look at it like this is what God wanted to bring my way. So I need to You have to overcome. It. You know what I'm saying? I have to overcome it. Number Wait, before you go to number two, number let's two. let's check this off. This is our list to make sure that Positive we're successful. Attitude, we have one. that, I think. Right? All right. Number two is value time. That's the new one. Okay. Yes, it is. Time is limited. If I lose money, I can get it back. I lose a girlfriend, I can find a new one. If I lose a spouse, I find a new one, right? But time is one thing I don't get back. Right. My time on this earth is limited. So the way I value it is what I get out from it. Right. Okay? Number three is set smart goals. Okay. It's been smart means specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time out. That's what smart is. Okay. So that's the same thing. It's setting smart goals and having a plan towards getting somewhere in life so you could feel happy along the way. Right. Right? Number four is embrace change. Okay? Change is part of life. It's going to come our way. Whether you want to or not. Or we're going to change it, right? Right. Things change all the time. Me being here is going to change the way I believe who I am, what I'm worth, right? And vice versa, it's going to change your perspective of me. It's going to change what your audience thinks of me. 
But that's part of life. You know, some of them are going to think I'm full of shit and they're not going to care. Some of them think like, wow, he actually has something meaningful to say and I'm going to listen and learn to what he has to say. I can't embrace what they have to believe. That's their beliefs. They have right. to believe in that. And then last but not least, number five is learn to each grow. Okay? That's the foundation of success. The more I learn, that makes me a little bit better. But the more I teach, it forms my foundation of success because the more I teach, the more I internalize the things that I learn and it grows me as a person, it grows people around me as people and that drives the outcome, right? So those are like my five principles of success awesome. that I build everything around, you know what I'm saying? I consistently look at my time and I say, what did I do with my time today? Was it spent valuably? You know, did it drive a positive outcome? What is my mission in life? You know, and I'll be honest, I'll share my mission, right? My mission is to impact a million people to make their lives better, right? Because look, the knowledge that I have is because it's a hundred books I've read and it's thousands of hours I've put into becoming a better human being, right? So like, I don't have some specific knowledge that's better than anybody else. No, no other person is any better or worse than me. It's attainable. I've just attained it by learning and growing, mm. right? So to me, it's, it's about that mission and purpose, right? But happiness, starting with a positive mental attitude, dude, attitude defines 90% of who you are, right? And to me, like, look, I'm going to read this to you, right? First thing you actually guessed it, Jay. Happiness is an inside thing. Right. Okay? If I'm waiting for a moment to become happy, right, mm. that means that I'm just taking away happiness from me right now. And right, I'm you're being passive power. about it. Yes. Like I'm saying, like, if I get you're that next hoping. raise and I take my kids to Disney, I'll be happy. But that's not what happiness is. That's part of life. Happiness is, why can't you just be happy today? Right. You know what I'm saying? Second is happiness is a state of mind. Make sense? I wake up and I decide if I'm happy or unhappy. Nobody else tells me what happiness and unhappiness is. I tell myself what happiness and what unhappiness is, right? And the third and most important thing is happiness requires a lot of practice. I'm being honest, to repeat dude. It, yeah. When I wake up in the morning and I smile at myself and I look at myself and I go, Jay, you fucking motherfucker, <laughs> you're alive today. Yeah. All right? And I say to myself, like, don't fuck this up. Right. You might not get up tomorrow morning, all right? <laughs> you're fucking alive today, all right? Take advantage of that. It's a completely different mission. You know right. what I'm saying? I wake up not like hating on people and hating on things I can't do and all the fucking problems I got to deal with and the fight I had last night with my wife or the fucking argument I had with my business yeah. partners. It's about like, dude, I'm fucking alive. If I can be alive forever, nobody could touch me. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's the fucking finite resource you got. Right. It's your days on this earth. We not we don't know when that's over. I appreciate that. You know uh, what I'm saying, dude? So I look at myself in the mirror and I go, you're fucking alive, man. You better have a good day today. You know what I'm saying? And that drives right. me to have a great fucking day. I say, if I can make it till midnight tonight... It's a good goddamn You're ahead. Day. You know what I'm saying? I'm up ahead. You know what I'm saying? So my happiness You're is You're ahead of something. That's right. You know what I'm saying? My happiness isn't dependent upon what car do I have in my garage. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not dependent upon, you know, what my family thinks of me. It's dependent upon the fact that, thank God, I'm alive. What do you want to say to the viewers as far as your business is concerned? I mean, um, if, they, if they're looking for security, if they how do they get in contact with you and how do they um, – or Ryan not you, but I mean, com, it's like, don't right? contact me. Yeah, not well, you, I, but I'm nah. saying, you know, the company. Lionsecurity.com, that's my company, obviously, right. okay. that you can be a part of. It's as simple as that, but – You specialize in – The viewers that I would say is that if I gave you some meaning, if I gave you some purpose, if I gave you something that you could take home and apply to your family – Fuck me, okay? I'm going to live with or without you. That's not going to change who I am. Just take the message that I'm given and I'm going to challenge the same thing I challenge them. Set your goals around your family, about your personal growth, and about who you are as an individual. Because if you can make yourself better, and if you can grow the business you're a part of, regardless of who that is, and you can spend a little bit more time with your family, you're going to succeed regardless, okay? So stop worrying about the bullshit of how people are judging you and how you judge yourself. Just focus on the things that matter, which is, you know, family, personal happiness, and professional growth so you can grow as an individual and become a better person. What a great way to fucking wrap it up. Jay, 
thanks for coming out, man. This I'm always like, what? <laughs> no, no, I appreciate your time, man. I, it's cool that you're awesome, and I hope we can um we can do this again, maybe in six months or a year, okay, whatever yeah, it is, to yeah, to yeah. not to fucking touch back and say, hey, man, like we took what you you showed us today, and now now look where we're at. You know, I want to make sure my goal that. is now to get you to a thousand viewers. And then we'll figure out where we go from there. But <laughs> we're gonna hold you to that. Fuck yeah, <laughs> gonna I'm gonna help you. you to that. <laughs> All it's right, easy. So <laughs> that's it. And we out, George. Love you guys. Bye bye. Later. Hi, everybody. First of all, thanks for listening. And we just want to give a second quick shout out to all of our sponsors, Division Street Auto. In Pawtucket, Rhode Island, holla at them. Go see George. You know he's gonna take care of you. Also, think I think he's trying to pee in the closet. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, another big thanks to <laughs> big thanks to Legends Pub and Grub, who not only sponsors the podcast but lets us use their beautiful function room to record now. Onlyville Tires, go holla at Dory. Whether you need a used tire, new tire, she's going to take care of you. Uh, she's been a friend of mine for a few years, and anytime I need tires, I only go see Dory. Big thanks to Aunt Cambio, the cleanest barber in town. Listen, guys, if you're getting friend-zoned a lot and not getting laid, go see your barber that you've been seeing. If you want to get the Punani, look it, go see my barber. Aunt Cambio will take care of you. JW and Sons Construction, anything that you need from kitchens to cabinets, the whole nine yards. You can find them on Facebook and on Google. And almost forgot my good friends over at Donkey Dodgers Poker, DDP, Facebook, World Series of Poker, $10,000 buy-in. You can win all that shit just from paying $25 for a buffet and playing some free poker. And thanks again to Tops Showroom and Galleria, LED lighting, fluorescent lighting, all the good shit, guys. Thanks again. I love you. Big thanks to Jay, the goat goatcher, coming through tonight. It's been a blast. Obviously, George, Jay O'Leary. It's been fun. Have fun, guys. Bye.